everyone, welcome back to Jasper's Game Week Aussie Edition. If you're joining us for the first time today, I'm Sarah, this is John, and we're from Meeples and Dragons. We're coming up on Game 2 for today with Game Master Brad from the Hobbled Goblin. We'd like to thank Brad and his mischievous band of goblins for joining us today. And thank you to our friends at Ardent Roleplay for hosting us on their Twitch this week. If you're curious about how their augmented reality system for TPERPGs works, head on over to their site, ardentroleplay.com, and check it out. Don't forget you can influence the game through donations to give advantage, disadvantage, re-rolls and more through the Tiltify. We'll pass you over to Brad now. Thank you for joining us. Hello everyone, welcome to a fun session we're going to be having today. My name is Brad from the Hobbled Goblin Podcast and now in association with Meeples and Dragons and Jasper's Game Week, we are going to be having a fun three-hour session of We Be Goblins. So welcome everyone, I hope you have some fun. Uh, as I said, I'm from the Hobbled Goblin Podcast, which is a podcast hosted in Australia where we post the Savage Tide Adventure Path, which has been recreated for Pathfinder. And in this session, today we're going to be playing a three hour roughly game in pathfinder setting uh joining us today we have some amazing special guest stars but before that we also have a raffle that is going to be able to be attended to if you want to jump in for that so the raffle today which is the game five raffle if you want to donate for that is going to be winning two laser engraved glasses with the meeples and dragons logo one for the dm and one for a bard so if you are interested in those, feel free to head on through and put some money in towards that. It's all going towards a great cause. But now, let us introduce our special guest stars, as well as who they're going to be playing today. So this uh, module, as I mentioned, is going to be Weeby Goblins. Surprisingly, or maybe not, everyone is a goblin. Adam, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Brad. So, hey, guys, I'm Adam. I'm also from the Hubbled Goblin podcast that Brad mentioned. Uh, today, I will be playing Zengo Zipwap, the goblin alchemist. Like all good goblins, Zengo is afraid of dogs and horses. Um, unlike other goblins, though, he is, well, I guess he has a penchant for symbolism. I wouldn't go, he wouldn't go so far as to say he likes writing, but he might be a little bit curious about reading and writing unlike other goblins. He has a love of fire and of blowing things up. <laughs> Beautiful. And I do believe all of these goblins have a song. So do you mind telling us a little oh, about the song? Oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Goblins do have a song, don't they? Sure thing. All right, here we go. So Zango's song, which he stumbled upon on hours upon hours of meditation by himself. So ever since I in the womb... I long to make the things go boom. Tinker, tanker, rattle and clack. Face was green, but now is black. Hee hee. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then our next special guest star, we have got Amelia. Thank you for joining us. Hello, I'm Amelia. I'm a friend of the Hubble Goblin podcast joining in today. And I'll be playing Trazzy Buttwhistle, who is a goblin bard. Now, Trazzy, Trazzy likes to consider himself quite the artist. They are very good at the goblin languages, very much the best, and they take a lot of pride in their song. In fact, they made it themselves. It's a poem, although they were missing a few elements when they put it together. So, Trazzy is best of best, ripping holes in Horsey's chest. In the back is where I shout, zap with fire when wits come out. <laughs> and I look forward to playing her. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Awesome. And next up, we have got Sean. Hello there. Hi, guys. My name's uh, Sean, and I will be playing Derp Guzzle Stomp today. Uh, similar to Amelia, I'm also a friend of the Hubble Goblin podcast. Uh, I put my, you know, fantasy life in Brad's hands once a week. Um, and I'm also a streamer here on Twitch.com. Uh, twitch.tv oh my god i'm so bad at twitch.tv forward slash pantsless rambler uh and derp himself uh he is a aspirational little goblin 
Uh, unfortunately, when he was growing up, he never got his dagger license, but he wanted to be a goblin raider so bad that uh, even though he didn't have the qualifications, he had to resort to whatever weapons he could use, which just happened to be his face. Uh, so as a result, loves to chew on things, loves to bite, and he's also got you know a bit of a culinary side, uh, underappreciated. Um, but his song reflects that in uh, biting, chewing, chomping faces. Put those long shanks in their places. Sharpen teeth on juicy bones. Nor on ankles. Send them home. <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to this so much. Beautiful. <laughs> and then we have got the wonderful Lydia. Hello. Hi, guys. Um, so I'm Lydia. I'm from uh, Dungeons & Dragons web series on YouTube called Split the Party. Uh, today I will be playing Rita Big Bad. Um, she, is a, she has a psychotic obsession with harming uh, animals, small animals that she can get her hands on. Um, she's a fighter, so she's a bit reckless and will just throw herself into anything um, and has a fine sense of smell for, for dogs. She, she hates dogs, but she loves hunting them down. Um, and Rita's song is Rita Chuck, Rita Bite, Rita Slay and Rita Fight, Rita Stab and Rita Smite, Rita Kills It All Just Right. <laughs> Beautiful. She's psychotic. I'm very scared of her. <laughs> well, I hope you all are in for a little bit of crazy, chaotic fun today, because this is no let's all be heroes. This is we be goblins, and we are going to be having yeah. a little bit of goblins. chaos today. So what we're going to be doing is you are all part of the Lictoed tribe of goblins who live in Brine Stump Marsh south of a much-hated man-town called Sandpoint. For anyone who's ever played Pathfinder, you've probably heard of Sandpoint. Hmm. Uh, once, some other goblins tried to burn Sandpoint down, and there would have been legends if they succeeded. Um, but they didn't bring enough <laughs> fire, and they got themselves killed instead, as tends to happen when you don't have enough fire. So, yesterday, your tribe discovered that one of your own had been using the Forbidden Arts and was engaged in one of the greatest taboos. Writing things down. <gasps> I know. In fact, rumor holds that he was writing a history of your tribe. One of the worst things you could possibly do. There's no swifter way to bring about bad luck than stealing words out of your mind by writing them down, because you can never get them back once they've been written down. And so your tribe had no choice. You branded his face with letters to punish him, and everyone called him Scribble Face now. And then you ran him out of town, <laughs> took all his stuff, and burnt down his hut, as you do. <laughs> but that's where things got interesting. Because before you all burnt down his hut, the great chief Gutwad found a weird box inside the building. Inside of it, there looked like there was a map, as well as strange little fizzy boomsticks that you think the Longshanks called fireworks. Uh, you know, those fireworks became very, very handy when you were trying to burn the house down. And then in the morning, Chief Gutward announced that tonight there would be a feast in order to drive out any lingering bad luck from Scribbleface's poor decisions. But perhaps even more exciting, all of you have been secretly invited to meet with Chief Gutward in his moot house. Why would the chief want to meet with you? It can only mean he's got an important mission for you all, one that the other goblins of the tribe couldn't possibly pull off. This could be your chance to go down and lick toad history. We all excited? We all ready? Woo! Woo! Beautiful. <laughs> so what you're all doing right now is you are meeting in your center of town, basically. I say town, it's a, it's, it's a uh, village at best. Um, and you're making your way towards the moot house of the great, his mighty girthiness, Chief Rend Wattle Gutwad, who rules Lictoad Village from atop his great teeter chair. Now, all of you are a bit scared because you know that uh, Chief Gutwad's voice is so powerful that just hearing him speak is enough to send you screaming in fear. So none of you have spoken one-on-one -on -one with him before. You only ever speak to his aide de terre, the pompous and overdressed goblin named Slorb. He usually speaks for him. 
But for now, you are all standing outside the moot house as you scuttle up together. Do you want to introduce yourselves and say hi to each other? What do you look like? Those kinds of things. It wasn't me. That's all I have to say. I had nothing to do with it. Maybe it was your fault. No, no. I, I never seen the writing. I never did it. It wasn't me, okay? I think it was. I think I think it was you as well. I you you've always lied. You've always done this. I think it's you. I think it's you too. Uh, uh, no. uh, uh, yeah, I, it was him. Let's let's get him, fellas. Let's get him. Let's get him. Okay. Silence. And stepping oh. out of the moot house is the very pompously overdressed. He actually has buttons on his shirt. Lord, a greasy looking goblin. Oh. The great. Chief, I'll see you now. <laughs> uh, we all agree it was him, right? Well, it's a silence. It was me. But I said silence. Did you need to listen to me? Come, come, inside. And he leads you inside to the moot house. As you walk inside, it's very dark in there. There is a couple of holes in the roof, thankfully, to let some light in, but otherwise there's no, like, proper light. Um, and as you walk inside, you can see that the the walls of this moot house are just stacked full of trophies from the Lictoed heroics. You know, stolen weapons, shiny bits of armor, little bits of treasure, a couple of brine pickled bodies are brutally slaughtered, uh, mostly dogs and other things that goblins are terrified of and hate. And as you walk inside, you see none other than his mighty girthiness, Chief Gutwad. Sitting upon the teeter chair. It's about a six foot tall chair, and Chief Gutwad is sort of spilling out the sides of it <laughs> as you come inside. And as you walk in, Slorb looks at you and goes, You may sit on the floor in front of the chief. Is a great honor. Oh. Honor? I'm gonna sit. That seems like a wise idea. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Oh, well fed one. Go and down sit down. Quickly. And the chief looks at you, looks at Slorb, and always he whispers to Slorb, and then Slorb talks to you guys. But mm. instead, he opens his mouth. And I'm ah. going to need everyone to make me a will save as he starts speaking to you. Oh! Mm. First roll! So you can either use the roll 20, or you can use the dice. I'm going to use, use some real dice, just because I'm yeah. just like that. I wish I'd done that. I'll use roll 20 until it betrays me. Then I'll swap <laughs> to real dice. So I rolled a 19, Brad, so that gives me 18. <laughs> you got negative one. I got negative cool. one. So, uh, Sean, you got a 15. Melia got a 9. Lydia, what did you get? I've got an 8. An 8? Mm. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So, uh, and then, um, Marshall, Adam, sorry, you got... An 18. 18, beautiful. So, both Trazzy and Retta find themselves... Ah! terrified as he opens his mouth and starts to speak. The rest of you guys manage to hold it together as he starts talking. You all <laughs> each of you you are best lick toads but for me and, and maybe Slorb maybe that you are fleeing in terror <laughs> from the mighty sound of my voice is all the proof you need. Mm. Yet soon, all the toad goblins know your might. For I have picked you for dangerous mission. Wait, so we're not in trouble? No. Oh. Not even him? I didn't do it! He did it! Silence! Huh? You know about fireworks and map we found in Superface's hut? I Legend don't put fireworks there. Is forbidden. Glares at. <laughs> um, what was the fire character's name again? Uh, Zingo, right? Zingo, yeah. Yes. <laughs> glares at you. Make sure you remember that. Anyway, fireworks were fun. Yes, but map is more fun. It shows a way to a place near the coast where Scribbleface found fireworks. Hmm. And it says there'll be more fireworks there. I want them for lick toads. 
You all go get them. All right. Tonight, we have big bonfire to burn away bad luck from you. Mm. We play many games. Yeah. And, and feast. feast. And, and feast. feast. Yes. Yeah. That's fun. Tomorrow, you fetch me fireworks. If you meet men, you make them dead. If you meet dogs, make them dead. If you meet horses, you make them dead. If you eat meat, log, slags, eat goblins, babies, many, you maybe probably should run. Uh, and if you not find fireworks, not come back. Uh, Boy feeds you, Lord. We find fireworks. Now, gone. Okay. <laughs> then, but food now, right? First fire. Cool. So <laughs> Slob comes to get you lot and ushers you out of the room. And he looks up towards you. Eh, this very big honor you've been given. Make sure you don't let the chief down. Oh, we best of best. I best mm. of best. Not you, me. Us. Me. I am, I am best of one best. of best. Maybe. Depends if you can come back alive. <laughs> Anyway, I have very, very well detailed map that shows you where to go. Yeah, have a look. As he gives you this utterly masterful map. <laughs> cool. Is there I would like yourself? someone to be able to like. Uh, you guys don't need to figure that out. You can figure that out pretty well easily. Right, um, but I would like everyone to make me a knowledge local check, or if you don't have knowledge local, it's just an intelligence check. One d twenty plus your intelligence modifier. Oh, I can do that. I can do that. To one. see if any of this kind of sticks out to you, and you realize what's going on. Oh, all right. You mean Derp's anything that's on the map? Well, also to just realize where the map will take you. Okay. Beautiful. Trazzy got an 11. What else we got? I got a 14. 14, yeah. And Open five. Five. Beautiful. So in which case, you guys get three out of the four pieces of information, I could tell you. So the first thing that you realize is that you're going to be going through the marsh, which is where you guys live. Brine Stump Marsh, which is a place of great bounty for the goblins. Uh, lots of places to hide and lots of delicious things to eat. Um, some of those things are kind of poisonous, though, so it's best to take care. Um, one of the things about the marsh that makes it so great is that humans and the longshanks don't normally come into it because they're afraid of the monsters, which are a concern. But if you know about them before they find out about you, running isn't always an option. And amongst the dangers you might expect to find traveling through the area you're going to be going through might be wild dogs, giant bugs, giant snakes, and giant frogs. Oh... And Lot's legs eat goblin babies many. Also known as Lot's legs. Yes. Lot's legs eats goblin babies many is a giant spider that got its name from eating lots of <laughs> babies. Surprise, surprise. But it seems to have grown bigger and stronger. And this map shows that you'll be traveling straight through Lot's legs territory, which is very scary. Which is probably only topped by the fact that you're pretty certain if you're following this particular creek to get there. You're going to be traveling into Vorka territory. And Vorka is one of the greatest terrors of the swamps to <gasps> the Lictodes. Because old Vorka used to be the wife of one of the chieftains until she killed him and ate him and several other go zombie, zombies yeah. goblins. And is a cannibal goblin who lives somewhere out that way. You don't know. You just know that if goblins head in that general vicinity, they often don't come back, and you always ascribe any dead goblins to her. You don't even know if she's dead or not. But that is what you are worried about. Right. So we're going through. We're going through the marsh. We're going through the Brinestone Marsh, where the eight many goblin children, lots of legs is. Lots of and legs. We might be going to Vorka territory as well. Yes. Okay. okay. Well. Me thinks Big Chief not so scary. Voice not so bad. What? No, big, terrifying. Yeah, scary. I think him. I think him bigger. My point to um, Derp. Maybe you be Chief. Oh, oh. No, I couldn't be Chief. I, 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 I never finished my training. <laughs> but you, but you eat lots. Big head, big mouth. Yeah, I could be big eater in Chief. Yeah. 
Well, I'll eat big things, eat lots of legs, each one, yum, yum, all of them, one meal. See? Well, Chief quality. We get back first. You go first. You walk first. Me? No, him. I, no, Chief, oh. Chief. Oh, Chief Big Head, they'll call me. And he's mm-hmm. pointing to his uh, uh, ab- abnormally large head, even for a goblin. <laughs> So as you guys come out, you watch all the goblins in your little tribe and village rustling around, grabbing branches and sticks, little bits of unburnt timbers that didn't burn from Scribble Face's hut yesterday. And it looks like they are stacking up for a giant bonfire in the middle of town as the sun is starting to set. Uh And you see foods coming in, you know, great things to eat they're brought in. Snails, you know, some mostly intact and unrotted fish, couple of snakes, uh, that all the goblins have brought together a great bounty for you all. And as night falls, you guys cluster around the campfire getting ready for this bonfire. Mm-hmm. And when the great chief Gutwad is being carried by four struggling goblins to lift the teeter chair and bring him out. And it's at this point you realize none of you have ever seen him get out of his chair. As far <laughs> as you know, him and the chair are one. But he needs to have his six foot of height so he can glare down at his, min- you know, at his disciples enough as four struggling goblins put down the chief. He looks out towards you all. Takes a blue and red spiraling looking little device from him lights it on fire, points it at the bonfire, and then there's as it fires out, not one, not two, not three, but four little explosions of fire that light the bonfire up. And all the goblins scream, and they start to sing. The Lick Toad song. <laughs> All right. So, this Lick Toad song is going to be for everyone. Oh. Pick your favorite tune. Off you go. I put the lyrics up on the screen. Ready, you count us in, ready? Yeah. Uh, two, yeah, three, let's count three, us five. in. Let's go. Four. Three, two, we, one, go. We, 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 to have my hair and beard to have push the veggies we to death we let the rest be put it stewed we be we be told you be told hey which is about what it sounds like when goblins decide to say perfect perfect rendition Cool, as they start to go and have an absolute goblin party. There is people screaming and having fun, people just grabbing food, some of them stealing food from the people, as you would. Um, And then the chief decides to be very nice to you guys and brings out this very large barrel filled with fermenting cider apples. So if you would like to have a drink, you're going to have something in your inventory to take a drink from this. So I believe you all have some vessel of some sort. What have you got? Uh, Derp r- runs just absolutely manically towards this barrel, pulling his tiny little teapot out from, I, from what I guess you could call a pocket. <laughs> You've got a teapot? <laughs> what else we got? Oh, so- uh, oh you go. Uh, um, Rita, like, pulls out this half-drunk bottle of... Um, perfume and skulls it like wide eyed <laughs> looking at the cider pot and then runs over as fast as she can and um gets her vial ready to just as take as much as she can cool. uh little trazzy runs up and it's like oh uh, <clears throat> shit uh pulls out a, a cloth bag that has something in it tips it i goes close enough <laughs> <laughs> And Zengo slips off away from the party for a second back to his hut and he comes back with a long but partially like broken at the top test tube. <laughs> Beautiful. So you all come along, you grab yourselves some drinks and you have a great time. I will get everyone to make me a fortitude save to see if you can hold down the slightly alcoholic, which for a goblin is pretty bad. Um, at 20! Very <laughs> We can all hold our booze. You can. <laughs> really so you can. guys all take a drink. All the goblins are watching you. Very impressed that you still seem stable on your feet. And then as the evening progresses and food is eaten and cider is drunk, 
Their word of your deeds, and that tomorrow you will be going out on a great quest, start to spread. And some of the goblins in the tribe start to issue you dares. And they kind of gather you all together. And they're like, yeah, you, you four be heroes, right? Therefore, you take dares. Dares? Well, dare number one. All get to do one each. Who huh. can prove that they can dance with Squealy Nord? <laughs> Who's Squealy Nord? Would Squealy Nord, Nord is like currently check, displayed terrifying beast on the screen, uh, also known as a pickling, a pig, <gasps> pig, piglet. Oh, um, but Nord. for you guys, a terrifying beast. Now, <laughs> Squealy Nord is utterly terrifying because it eats goblin bodies. <gasps> so therefore, everyone thinks it's going to probably eat you too. <gasps> Um, it is a piglet, though, so, like... Uh, but for you guys, very scary. So this would be a challenge <laughs> of, basically, rodeo as we strap you to a piglet and you have to hold on for 18 seconds. Rita uh, shoves her hand into her, one of her pockets and pulls out um, a pocket of a wedding dress, by the way. She's wearing a wedding dress that doesn't quite fit her and she <laughs> trips over it every now and then. But she's, she's got a little pocket because she always has a... Uh, she always needs access to as... Uh, like a handful of um, insects. She grabs a bunch, oh, throws them at who just spoke to her, you know, as if in the direction of the piglet. I said, no, I want to do this. I'm not doing this. I can't do this. Okay, so you're out. Um, I've just been told, by the way, we have a donation from D20. Apparently, hey. I need to have disadvantage on something because he noticed I was lip syncing, apparently, during <laughs> the off, which was outrageous. So nice. clearly, my singing Ooh. isn't up to scratch. Name so the next shame, time man. I roll something, I will have disadvantage. Thank you for that, D20. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So Retta has volunteered not to dance with Squealy Nord then? But you, you good dancer, Retta. I see you before. But not, not with this thing. Not, not with it. It's just... No, I don't like it. It's got a point. Mm. What else? Okay, fine, I'll do Ready, it. it. <laughs> yes, Rita, 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 Rita. Me, me, I do it. I do it. Rita, Rita. Rita. And they take you towards Squealy Nord's pit, which is a large for a goblin, ten foot deep pit, twenty foot in diameter. For you guys, it's huge. It's like a coliseum, basically, and. They have taken Squilly Nord over to the side into a little corral area. Little pink piglet, you know. There it is. <laughs> and you're going to have to jump onto Squilly Nord's back and hold on for three rounds, okay? Ooh, Without falling off. I, I think I've got disadvantage because someone from Split the Party, Wonder Who, just donated $15 and wants to give me disadvantage. So. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. There you go. Yes, the anything six, worse than friends? <laughs> Uh, and I mean, the worst enemies are friends. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so what you're going to have to do then, Retta, is you're going to have to jump onto Squilly Nord, and whilst squealing as loud as you can, obviously, because that's how this works, make mm -hmm. a ride check, first one with a disadvantage, to see if you can hold on to Squilly Nord's back as he races around. Is there anything you want to do to prep yourself, or are you just going to go for it? I hike the wedding dress up as much as I can so I don't trip, and then I sort of, like, tuck down as if I'm going to charge at it head first, and then, like, empty my pockets full of the fucking insects and stuff as I get ready to, <laughs> to bear down on this pig. And I scream as I make my way towards this pig. Um, so I'm leap rolling... Leap on the back. You're going to do a ride check. You do have a plus 11 to your ride. Plus 11. Okay. With a disadvantage? You do have disadvantage to start off with. Oh, okay. Thank your friends for that. Oh, not bad. 28 and then 27. So Ooh. you leap onto Squilly Nord's back, grab him, and just wah, wah, as the pig as starts <laughs> writhing up and down. And you're like, Woohoo! Somehow you find a hat. Yeah! Um, <laughs> cool. You're holding on. I want you to do another check. As Squilly Nord starts to buck and twist, you don't have disadvantage for this one. I think it was only the first one. Ooh, 18. Cool. You're managing to hold on. You are nearing your 18 second mark. Can you stick the dismount? One last ride check. Ah, 26. Yes. Oh. After 18 seconds of woohoo, woohoo, you manage to like quick dismount of the back. Screen Ord goes charging off into the other side of the corral. And this kind of stands there looking at you just <laughs> as you stand up to thunderous applause. <laughs> <laughs> And then you very quickly scurry away from Squilly Nord, who was like wandering back towards you. 
And as you come up, Slorb is standing there as uh, the great Chief Gutwad uh, whispers into his ear. And Slorb comes over and goes, You have proven yourself worthy. And as such, we offer a great boon to you, Ritta, for tomorrow's adventures. He holds up a gourd, which is a vegetable. You! Gourd! <laughs> ah! With a cork in it. Behold! The dragon bro gourd. I'm like, ah. So this dragon boo brew gourd has a strange bubbling elixir inside of it. And if you drink it, it gives you the ability to spit out fire three times for three times in a row. Oh. Every single time you do it, it does four D6 fire damage to a single target that's within 25 feet. And they get a DC 13 reflex save for half damage. If you don't use it within an hour, it's all gone. You burp it all up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have shared that with you so that you can see it later. Thank you. Beautiful. So all the other goblins are like, oh, exciting. Okay, next challenge. Next challenge. Who wants to eat a bag of bull slugs real quick? Oh, oh, me! Bull slugs! <laughs> Delicious! <laughs> no, these are black bull slugs. My favorite! <laughs> favorite? Oh, he mad! Yay! <laughs> As they grab out a writhing sack of black bull slugs. So these slugs are about the size of a fully like decked out sausage. Um, and even amongst goblins, they're considered particularly foul tasting because they exclude like exclude exude, sorry, a slightly like poisonous, just mildly uh like slime that they come out. And they're very difficult to chew as you tend to kind of have to pop them. Oh. So they kind of come up to you with a wicker basket covering this little bag. Like they pull out, as well as a napkin. That's a nice soggy leaf they found. It's mostly in one mm. piece. As they hand this to you, and they go, all right, you have uh, one minute to eat all five. You ready? No problem. Okay. All and right. you look down at the wriggling little slugs that almost seem to look up at you. The little... <laughs> With the, with the eyes that they have, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I go, All right, so ready? I'll pick, up, pick up the first one and dangle it over my head. And cool. I need you to make me a fortitude save now. There are Easy. two options for this. One, you put it in the mouth, slush it around, spit out the slime. That's the safe way. Two, boom, right down the hatch. Much easier, mm. but you get slime inside you. Slime has all the flavor. <laughs> 21 on that fort save. Cool. So <laughs> first round, you just... Ah, look, mm, ah, more, more. Cool. And second the second round, one. you just going straight down again? Straight down the hatch. Cool. So you put it down, you give it a chew. You don't quite manage to get it down this time as it's stuck in your mouth. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cool. So that's two rounds of combat. Try again. All right. Well, so after that one kind of... Struggled, uh, struggled to get down. Mouth. It's oh, it's still in my mouth. mouth. You haven't it yet. Still haven't. All right, well, I'll give another gulp then. So that's sure. <laughs> another thought save. Yep. 19. Cool. You manage to like get your teeth onto it. You squish it. It kind of pops. You hear a little ee! as it pops. And then you manage to slurp it down. So that is two of the five slugs down. All right. Uh, and the third one, after that one kind of struggled to get down, I don't go into this one with such reckless abandon. And instead, I'll kind of pull it out and <laughs> like eat it like corn. Cool. Um, so you're trying to strip off all the slime and everything. Yeah. Get me another fourth save. All right. Cool. So you're <laughs> straight down the hatch. Very nice. You've got two left, I believe. <clears throat> Best I've eaten in weeks. And then the fourth one. Uh, back back down to just the straight slurp. Just, just straight down the hatch. Just Go down for down the hatch. She's getting excited now. And just. <laughs> Ah, yes! Then you got one left. All the goblins around is staring at you in a mixture of awe and horror. It's how most people look at goblins, but now it's the <laughs> goblins looking at you that way. You have one slug left. And the very last one, I'll, I'll pick up and then just kind of look at it around, eyeing it. This is the one I've been really waiting for. And I just kind of squeeze it like toothpaste so that all of the slime just kind of shoots straight into my mouth. Like, <sighs> get shot right in there. Shot. <laughs> cool. Go for it. Make me your final one. So is this meant to be slime 
This is sli- uh, this is slime and all. This is I'm actually slime taking the all. slime first, and then I'll just like <laughs> slurp out the the last bit Go like spaghetti. It. And it's a twenty one. <laughs> this is a one fortuitous couple. You have had a great time. So you have just slurped down all five of these terrifying slugs in like. Six rounds or seven rounds. Amazing. Um, <laughs> however, I need you to make me a fortitude save because of how many <laughs> just swallowed slime and all. Okay. Cool. So how many did you swallow slime and all? I think you only avoided one slime. So there was four non-slimy ones, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So in which case, you're just like, ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As you start to feel thickened. Cider and slime. So you currently have the second penalty for 24 hours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Worth it! <laughs> and the great chief Gartward is very excited to have seen that. And he comes <laughs> over and he kind of whispers in Slob's ear and Slob's eyes kind of open wide and he goes, what? what? You can't be serious? Really? Oh, what? Oh. Oh. Or if you say so? Oh. You? I've proven very impressive. And therefore, we give you. And he pulls out like a leather band. This great item, it is on loan. You must bring it back. The gourd you can use, but this one, it must come back or Chief will eat you. <laughs> it is the ring that lets you climb real good. No. And it's no. this little leather band. That is effectively lets you climb real good. So I will send it through to you to have a look at. But what it gives is it gives you plus <gasps> five to climb checks. Oh, oh. Mm. Thank you, old scrumptious one, for the feast and the pretty band. Beautiful. Sweet. Very well. Next up, we have the great goblin challenge of hide or get clubbed. I've heard it's like hide and seek, but in this case, we club you if we find you. Uh, <laughs> me? Ah, you want to try, do you? Yes. Very well, Trazzy. Let's see if you can shut your mouth long enough to stay hidden. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so you need to rush off into the marsh. You have no weapons, and all you can do is try and make a stealth check to hide. Alrighty then. Meanwhile, all the other goblins in the village get to try and find you, and if they do, they get to hit you with a club. I didn't think this all the way through. I just wanted the cool thing. Cool. So <laughs> I need you to make me a stealth check as you rush off into the marsh to try and find somewhere to hide. Alrighty, let's click the button. Hey! Nice. A 21. Beautiful. So these goblins are going to start rushing, and as you've kind of hidden... Where, where have you, what have you aimed for? What are you hiding behind? What am I hiding behind? Oh mm. boy, that's an important question. Tracy finds the biggest, thickest tree she can possibly find and kind of just goes straight up behind it. <laughs> Beautiful. And as you are hiding there, there are goblins all over looking for you, but obviously only a small number are actually going to come anywhere near you. So let's have a look how many. We are going to have, I rolled a nine. Nine goblins are Ooh. going to be coming to find you. And of them, we are going to need to see how many actually find you. So all of these <laughs> goblins are going to have minus one to their perception checks. Because <laughs> they're, it's, they're goblins. But I'm going to now roll a 9d20 and see if anything can be the 21. So basically, they need to roll a natural 20. <gasps> oh, oh. There's a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. No, a natural 20 makes it a 19. Yeah. They actually can't find you. So, yeah, they have a negative one to their perception check, and skill checks, natural 20s, don't automatically succeed. I also know that I did have disadvantage on one of these rolls. So let's re-roll that nat 20 to be something else. Okay, what are the odds of that? I got another natural 20. Um, But they still failed to find you. I, I don't quite know how that happened, but somehow one of them walks around the tree, and you just follow it around the other side. So you're kind of just circling each other. You're like, ah, ah, ah. Um, and after a short while, you just hear, "All right, getting bored. You come back, you win." As you, As you come back into the village, yeah, come creeping back. Saunter. Some of the other goblins are kind of looking around, being like, "Well, that was no fun. We didn't get to hit you." And they're like, "Yes, that's because she's good at it." Yeah, but I wanted to hit her. 
as Slorb hears, you know, whispers to the chief. And then he looks up and he's like, no, you're joking. That one. Fine. <laughs> you oh, may borrow, borrow the Gorge of Gluttons and pulls out this dog slicer. <laughs> this is a very pretty looking dog slicer. And you know that the Gorge of Gluttons is one of the chief's most prized possessions. The Gorge of Gluttons is a plus one dog slicer with Ooh. Goblin Bane. Sorry, not Goblin Bane. Dog Bane attached to it. So what that means is against dogs, it counts as a plus three dog slicer and does an additional 2d6 damage on a hit. Nice. Yeah. I come up to you and I'm like, you want to breathe fire? Uh, uh, I'll give you fire to breathe. Give me the dog slicer and I'll give you the fire. Someone <laughs> gave it to me. <laughs> fire? I can't breathe fire. Okay. <laughs> and we do a trade? Yeah, yeah let's do a trade. trade. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So you go <laughs> over the Gorge of Gluttons for the Dragon Brew Gourd. In which case, I will swap over that in the thing so you can read the Dragon Brew Gourd, Melia. And you will now get uh, the Gorge of Gluttons, Retta. So I'll pop that in for you in a little bit. But we have one final challenge and one final challenger. Ooh. Are you ready? Zengo? Zengo, like, looks around at, like, the other three, <laughs> seeing them all have, like, a prize and uh-huh. swallows audibly. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Well, you wait till the end. You get the fun one. Bring out the rusty ear biter. The what? The <laughs> rusty ear biter. And you hear screams of simultaneous joy and pain as from behind one of the houses, behind the moot house itself, comes a hollow coil of rusty wires, barrel hoops, bent swords, thorny branches and vines that's been kind of wrapped together. And as they roll this giant hoop out, basically, you can still see that there are several uh, ears still attached to it from the last Ah. time it was used. So there is currently three goblin ears still attached to it that they have sheared off since the last time. (laughs) As they point at you and they go, in you go! (laughs) Nasty ear! Gotcha! Crawl in gingerly. Oh, you can cool. do, do you want to do anything to get ready for it? You don't just have to dive straight through. I will stretch a little bit. Ah, ah. Do I, can I take, bring any of my things with me? You can bring anything. You can use anything that you have on you. Um, but you also realize you're going to have to squeeze through this thing. Now, yep. this um, rusty ear biter, obviously it's called that mm-hmm. because it's cut off so many different ears. It's an object of fascination and fear for the Lick Toads. There was a half-insane tinkerer who invented the thing uh, who has long since died because uh, he was carried off one night by a giant bird after his first and only test of a prototype of a bird-attracting hat. It worked very well. Um, but the legacy lives on, and as they all you know, cheer and hoot, you do have to try and climb through a 20-foot coil. Of, yeah, the rusty, of this stuff. rusty ear biter. I thought to never see you, but now I shall study your wonder. And I'll crawl into the rusty ear binder. Can I try and assess it and, you know, reduce the amount of damage it's going to do to me on the way through? Cool. So you can have a bit of a look at it to try and figure out the best way to get through it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically, there's no time limit for this, but you want to try and get through there. Because if you don't, they probably will just leave you in there for a while. Um, Maybe throw rocks at you. Maybe just shove the hoop, you know, something like that. Got to keep it entertaining. Mm You are thinking study it, though, potentially with hand on his chin. Yeah, if you're trying to squeeze through some of the tighter parts, maybe getting you know some pig fat, some mud, something else slippery mm-hmm. like some oil, and just like lubing yourself up may help you squeeze through a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna go over to Rita before I do, and I'm just gonna grab her dress that's been on the pig and like rub it against my chest. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I touched the guns. And then I'm gonna run back, and I'm just gonna pry apart some of the things. I'm, I'm trying to crawl into the into the rusty ear. By the you got to get through it. It's like it's a loop, and you got to climb through the hoop. Yeah, sweet. I'm just gonna climb through it. I'm gonna climb. Actually, I'm not gonna try and blow it up. Yeah. Beautiful. So, in which case, you need to make me an escape artist check. Ooh. 
three. Uh, escape artist. That is a ten. Cool. So you climb in and pretty ah, much, ow. you know, squeeze inside. You're like, ah, ah, bah, ah. Mm-hmm. now you do get a plus two from slathering yourself up with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, oil. Yep. But you <laughs> got a twelve in total. <laughs> yep. So straight away as you climb in, you end up taking. Um, that is going to be one point of damage. It's a D4 minus two. As you right. scratch your ear and you're like, ow! And you look back at it thinking like, yeah, we could do this. We could try again. Ah, damn it, stupid. Bite, bite, bite. And I'm just going to like move through more quickly this time, though, like a little bit ah, irritably. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, five. Five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you stick your head in again. <laughs> ah! As you're just not having much luck this time. Stupid you take... Tinker make bad ear biter. If I make ear biter, it'd be much better than this. <laughs> Go again. Uh, you take two points of damage this time. Some of the <sighs> goblins are like, hurry up, we're getting bored. <laughs> Shut up, it hurts in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got an 18. Oh, there no, you go. So this time you managed to like, eh, and you get past mm-hmm. the first little hoop. Now you're about a third of the way through. They're like, yeah, that's better. Go, go, mm-hmm. go, go, go. All right, push through again. Haha, <laughs> now you haven't seen go. I'm the smartest gobble ever. Ah, it's a six. <laughs> All the good rolls early in the night. And just, ah, ha, 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 again, you seem to get something caught on there. You take one point of damage this time. Yeah. And some of the goblins watching just kind of start leaving. No, I can do this. Zengo's good at this. Yeah. Try again, then. You're Push inside. Further. You need to get out somehow. 15. You know this guy. 15. 15 plus two. Is that including the plus two? Uh, yes. No, 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 cool. no, no, not including the ladder. Plus two, cool. it's 17. Dude, so you managed to squeeze yourself back through, and you can see the end. It's just there. Some of the board goblins can't turn around and go, oh, I got this. What? Zengo coming! Zengo gonna get out of here! Uh, final one is probably not gonna do it. It's an 11. A total for 11. So, yeah. Oh, you, they they watched you, they t- turned around to see you, but by the time you take uh, one point of damage, they're just like, man, he'll be in there for a while! Let's go eat! As most of the goblins just kind of leave you in there. You can try and squeeze out now. Can I actually, can I instead try to disassemble it, some of it, like part of it from the inside? You're already <laughs> inside of it. Yeah, because I'm no disassembled way to try from to the disassemble inside. It in the chop bits are facing in. Ah! All right, push out one more time with everyone running away. Ah, oh, there we go. That's the 22. There you go. So you manage to like squeeze them up the other side. You're like, ah, and there's like three goblin children inside a cage just being like, thank you. Somebody appreciates me. <laughs> <laughs> as they all kind of wander back. And the chief kind of looks over and goes, whisper, whisper. Oh, you're finally out. Yeah, yeah, good job. I'm looking thoroughly disappointed in himself. Zango is just going to walk back like. <laughs> and... Stupid people not get Zango. <laughs> Damn it. I failed and that's okay. It makes us look better. So it's funny. <laughs> cool. so unfortunately, you took too long and they got bored. So no, no item for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the knife settles down as you get a little bit damaged. Thankfully, one of the goblins takes pity on you and comes over to try and stitch up some of your uh, slashed up ears and body parts. So you can get two hit points back as they kind of create uh, deadly wounds on you to kind of heal you up a little bit. And they're That's like, good. there, there. It's okay to be pathetic at times. <laughs> You'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> <laughs> Any evil genius vibes now, great. Goes home and tinkers for a while. No, nobody at this feast happens to be passing around some kind of like black slug sickness removing potion <laughs> or, or mead. With it. Okay, no, just checking for no, a friend. friend. It's all good. Beautiful. <laughs> so you guys all party throughout the night and then pass out throughout the dawn and then you get woken up by Slorb. Come and meet the chieftain. He kind of looks at you and just says very simply, Get fireworks and bring them here to me. I will give you current fireworks to help. Oh. And he brings oh. out a little box. And he has for you two Desden candles, which is what he used yesterday, the spirally ones. Oh. He has got four paper candles, which is like little spang, little flashbang things, and a single sky rocket, which he does give directly 
towards uh, Zengo as pity for yesterday. For me? <laughs> He'll give me great skyrocket? Yes. Use oh. wisely. <laughs> he starts like ogling it and coveting it and, and holding it close. <laughs> cool. So the but skyrocket is like a foot long tube that if you light it, starts to shed light like a torch, obviously, and let out white sparks. Mm. And then one la- round later, it flies 90 feet for 1d6 rounds and then explodes, doing 2d6 fire damage in a 10 foot radius burst uh, that will also blind or deafen someone that it hits. Do you get one skyrocket? I've shared that with you. Everyone gets a paper candle. Which is basically just like a flashbang. You light it, throw it, and then if you're in that square, it can dazzle you for one round. And there are two Desden candles. These ones you light, and then you point it at someone, and it does one point of non-lethal and one point of fire damage. But if it's a critical hit, it also blinds them for one round. So they only can go about 25 foot. You get five foot, like a a range penalty for every five foot it Mm -hmm. travels. Uh, There's two of those. I don't know who wants them. I'm just like, I'm like holding on to my skyrocket now, so happy on my paper candle that I don't really care for the kill. So you've all got one of those. And, you know, Slorb is like, it's time to go. Make sure you're not come back. And if you don't find the fireworks and bring back all the magic items or else we feed you to Squirrely Nord. Oh, yes, of course, of course, of course. Now you must go very, very long way. So best be off. Almost a whole mile. <laughs> <laughs> That's the furthest I've ever been. Beautiful. Me too. As you guys start the trek through the marsh. Now, it would be relatively difficult to get there, actually, because there are lots of deep water that you need to like go over, thatches of stinging nettles, all those kind of things. You kind of like trek your way following the oh-so-fantastic map towards where you're traveling. Can I get a perception check as everyone is going... Oh, if you had taken damage, by the way, from sleeping, you'll get two points back for sleeping in uh, your own territory. Oh, perfect, in our own territory. I needed that. (laughs) So I need everyone to make me a perception check as you are traveling along the way. 19. I'm too busy, German, to notice anything. Have a good look. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm too sick. I got like my head in my hands apparently. Hey, what? Uh, eighteen for perception. Eighteen, beautiful. Yeah, reader and Zengo. Yeah. So you are making your way through the marsh, following the creek. That is Ooh. your um useful information. So you guys should all be at the top there. We'll move oh, you down oh. a little bit so that oh, you're in the stream properly. Um, Rita's like sniffing the ground. She's always constantly sniffing new territory uh, in case she smells any kind of canine, dog, goblin, or dog, wolves. Why are you doing that, Rita? That. She's just like, what does it's all clear. Tell you? I believe it's all clear. Is that right? With a perception check, is what I. Uh, let's double check. Yeah. So uh, you ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, what did you get for your perception check? I got 18. 18? Mm-hmm. So yeah, everything looks clear to you. Everything is just fine. <laughs> See, Rita? Last As night you, you ranked really are... Nord. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah, so you, you're all kind of trekking down through the tree line. Everything's good. What's the marching mm. order at the moment? Oh, I'm at the back. Ooh, mm. you'd be well out of it. If I'm yeah. sniffing like a dog, then I'm, I might be at the front. And then yeah. like sometimes coming back towards the group. Yeah, I'm 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 not far behind just kind of checking the ground for various uh mushrooms and, and moss, anything that will settle my stomach really. Mm-hmm. Okay. That goes pretty far at the back, probably back with um a bit the back, feel free Ozzy. to move yourself towards the back. So up is the back then. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you're kind of sneaking through here, keeping an eye out, and then everything looks perfectly fine until from above you guys hear this chittering sound. But it's almost too late as this terrifying beast settles themselves towards you out of the tree line. And I apologize to every arachnophobe who <laughs> is about to get terrified um, by this. As from the sky comes out Lot's legs eat goblins, babies, many, who comes <laughs> no! scuttling from the sky towards you. I need you all to roll the initiative. Uh, you should all be about here at this point, under the tree line. 
as Lot's Legs comes out. Now, just so you're aware, I have, since you're all small, I've made medium things large. Just, therefore, they take up more space and it's a bit more interesting. Yo. My initiative, and my initiative roll. There. Oh, dear. You guys are in for a fun time. <laughs> right. Ah, well. <laughs> cool. So I've got Trazzy. I've got Derp. Uh, Zengo rolled twice for some reason. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, I was doing the, the 3D <laughs> dice thing. Cool. Uh, and we are Take just waiting one. for Retta. So, Retta, did you roll? Or are you going to do dice? Oh, you appear to be muted for some reason. Rita! your dog does tell you? Go. Uh, Lydia, I think you have muted yourself somehow. <laughs> Sorry. Pull back. There back. you go. Cool. So you want to roll me initiative? She ran into a, she ran into some bushes and came around. That's what happened to her just now. Okay, oh, cool. What did you get for um, initiative? Sorry, only five. Five, cool. That's fine. Sweet. So, yeah. as Lot's legs descends from above you, chittering. Um, why are you called Huapu Siapu? That was the I default name. It's... Okay, cool. Whatever. So that that's not you. Beautiful. So yeah, Lot's legs comes skittering downwards with a uh, slithering bite, and it's going to bite the first person in front of it, which is probably going to be, unfortunately, the second derp, mm -hmm. as it lashes oh. out with its teeth. Oh. Ooh. Oh, that includes the damage and everything. Okay, that's what... Well, that doesn't seem right. Why are there so many dice there? Cool. Anyway, it was a 16 to hit and one point of damage if it hits you. It did <laughs> not. Hey. Cool. What is Too your little. Oh. 17. Oh, okay. Is that flat-footed, though, since you didn't pay past the uh, perception check to see it? All right, no, it's flat-footed. No, it did hit. One damage taken. <laughs> so it bites it, you'd make one point of damage, but then I need a fortitude save to resist the poison inside of it. Ooh. Twelve. Oh, if only you weren't sickened. No. You are going to be nauseated oh, for no. one round, which means you're going to try not throw up as it bites into you. So on your turn, all you may do is move. Frazzy, this terrifying beast from above has come down. What are you going to do? She freaks out a little bit, and I can see on the map there's like a log next to where my character is. Yes. He dives behind that and sort of pokes her hand and goes, Go on, go on, stab the pussy butt, stab it. And okay. with that, I believe I'll move myself up a little bit. I've got the feet lead from the back. So anyone that's in within 30 feet of me gets a plus one to attack. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Just one to attack or anything else? Let me confirm that. Beautiful. Plus one bonus and all weapon damage rolls. There so we go. Damage. There you go. Not attacks, Ooh. but damage. Very nice. Yeah. As you are getting uh, encouragement from the back. Derp, it is your turn. You're currently nauseated. So all you may do is take a single move action on your turn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, I guess I'm just going to have to turn around and, and with yesterday's black slug slime kind of starting to come out of my mouth, clutching his stomach, just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to find a toilet! And then turn around, just <laughs> charge back to try and find some kind of... Uh... So if you do a full move, it will get an attack opportunity. If you just yeah. five foot step, then it won't. So you can like stagger away a little bit. Yeah, I, 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 I believe that. But I also think he's just feeling so nauseous he wants Beautiful. to turn around. You do get maybe another fort save to resist the poison running through your veins since it's okay. uh, longer than one turn poison. Cool, so you're oh. no longer poisoned at the end of this turn. I don't know why it's rolling quite so many dice. That's a bit strange. I might just... Um, yeah, odd. Regardless, this was a six to hit, so that bite does not get you. Nice. you. You have successfully made it out the way. Good job. Very nice. So next up, we have got Retta. Retta Big Bad. There um, is a terrifying monster there. Uh, is it too late to skull that bottle of... Oh, no, I gave the fire to you. <laughs> Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I whip out my dog slicer and I'm the just gorge of glutton, <laughs> dog slicer. Yeah. Yeah. And crazy eyed run at this thing. Cool. Just in my wedding dress. <laughs> so you're five foot away from it. So you kind of uh, shuffle towards it and slash out at some of its giant stabby legs. Go for it. 
Ooh, not great. Um, plus three. Uh, it's only six to hit. Yeah, six six ain't gonna cut it. So the Gorgeous Gluttons is plus four to hit, but that's still only a seven. Mm. So yeah, you slash out at it, it kind of rears back. I don't know what sound spiders make. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Next up, we have got Zengo Zip Up. Hey, Zengo, it's time. You show them how smart you are. And Zengo <laughs> is going to five foot step next to, like, you know, he's going to stay where he is because he's, he's in range there. He's going to reach down to his bandolier which is strung from one shoulder down to his waist. And it's a little bit like ragtag, but it does have a number of oddly, I guess, irregularly shaped vials within it. He's going to pull one out and he's going to pull another one out. He's going to put them together and then he's going to throw it. Cool. Unfortunately for you, we just got a very nice donation from TP Hat 246. Oh, oh, has given you this advantage. Came for the derp, stayed for the goblin eating babies. So, in which case, you're going to have to have disadvantage on this throw. Uh, I'm going to disadvantage. So, and I believe I'm throwing a ranged attack into combat as well. Uh, So, you are throwing a ranged attack into combat. Now, if you're just throwing a bomb, it's just a. if you're aiming for the square that they're in, it's just a 10 you have to hit. If you're aiming for a person, then it's their touch AC. Yeah, well, um, I'm going to aim for the actual spider, right? Because the splash... Well, if I aim for the square and it hits them, does it get, like, full damage or just, it just splash just gets splash. You have to actually I'm hit just gonna, I'm going to aim for... I'm going to throw my vial at the spidey. Go. Go for it. Uh, that was two 11s with disadvantage. So it would be a 14 normally. It would be a 15 normally. Uh, but yeah, so I got a I got a fifteen, but I'm throwing into combat. Cool, and so you got a fifteen, but you have disadvantage, and you rolled the same number mm-hmm. twice. Yes, very nice. Well, look, a fifteen will hit its touch AC because you're just hitting a giant spider. <laughs> so you're basically glassed in the face, and then what happens next? Oh, baby burn. It takes oh max damage. <laughs> it takes uh, eleven points of fire damage. So Ooh. there's just this massive explosion of fire. And I believe since it's a splash attack, then it would hit adjacent people. Including yes, for minimum damage. <laughs> so what's the minimum damage that Retta will take? Uh, the minimum damage is one, I believe. Oh, it two, includes actually. your intelligence modifier. Oh, five. <laughs> five points. Oh, down. no. Cool. <laughs> so Retta, you take five fire damage as this explosion hits the front of Lot's leg, eat Goblin Baby's many, and you're just... Can I, can I throw and, to, like the thorax oh. of it on the back? The back? Yeah. My wedding dress like catches a light and it starts to burn a little. I'm like, ah! Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Five points of damage. But it is Lot's Leg's turn, who is, you know, very unhappy about being bombed and is oh my. going to actually go, nope. <laughs> it did not expect to get hit by a giant firebomb. So it is going <laughs> to turn away and try and run in the opposite direction. Now, Retta, you get a free attack opportunity as it tries to run away. Oh, and that's back. it. So um, you may slash at it as it runs. Beautiful. Uh, yes, I'm going to go. If it's running past me and I'm still trying to put my fucking bride's dress off, the, uh, I'm going to slice at its, its legs to see if I can take it down. Go for it. Uh, oh, nine. Like, no, it's got eight. Nine to hit. Oh, dear. No. No? <laughs> so it scuttles away from you. So it was here. A nine is not going to hit. Damn it. Um, as it, you know, makes a bit of a distance and it scurries up and it jumps up the tree here and it's now on the top of this tree over here, kind of like scuttling. Frazzy, you see your prey getting away. Uh, week. I'm going to cheer and have a good old time. It's running away. I'm happy. But I will, however, pull out two little silver spoons that I have and I start tapping them against me for a beat. And I am going to start a bardic performance, just in case. Now, what does your bardic um, performance do? Because I believe it's a diff- bit different to a normal one. It is. Now, I am a flames, uh, flame singer bard, I believe is the correct term. And it's called Blazing Blades. So effectively what it does, it gives everyone who attacks it with a web sh- well, with a weapon gets a 1d4 additional points of fire damage to it. Oh! Nice. So you've started your performance and everyone feels their weapons like light on fire. Derp, you're no longer feeling sick. What are you going to do? Ah, yes, I'm no longer feeling sick. Well, I'm still feeling sick, just not nauseated. Not, not nauseated. <laughs> um, I'm just going to charge after this delicious looking spider, um, but I'm not going to be able to make it only 30 feet. Yeah. Do you have a ranged weapon? I do have a javelin. 
So you could so chase I could, and throw a javelin at I it. I could toss the javelin at it while I'm throwing it's it. It's up on the tree too, so that's that. not a bad idea. All right, easy. I'm just realizing I don't have my javelin in here, so I think it's a D4 for a javelin. Yeah, for a, uh, yeah. a small size javelin. <clears throat> yeah. But I'll roll a hit and probably not hit yeah. anyway. So your javelin goes <laughs> soaring through the air and lands somewhere ahead. Retta, your turn. You are um, pat out all the fire. Yes. Uh, I'm going to grab my short bow. Cool. So you're going to have up. to like drop the gorge of gluttons. Make sure you pick it up. Uh, pull out your short bow. Yeah, and give this a whirl. <laughs> oh. On a 20! There you go. <laughs> So for Pathfinder, for those of you who aren't familiar, when you roll that 20, you automatically hit, but you need to roll a second time to see Damn. if you get the bonus damage. Damn. So Damn. roll again to see if you get uh, another hit, and if you do get a hit this time, it'll be a critical hit. But you're guaranteed okay. to hit it. 1d20 or 1d4? Same as last time, 1d20 to hit. You add yeah. all the bonuses again. So I think it's 1d20 plus 5. Uh, 15. That is a confirmed critical hit. Yeah. <laughs> So what that means is that you get to do triple damage with a short bow. Ooh. So that makes it 3d4 damage. Amazing. I might do this on d 2 Oh, and 1d4 fire, fire damage. 4d4 damage. Um, you get a plus one from lead from the back as well. 5d4. Hang on, no. 4d4 plus one. There you go. So 4d4s? 4d4 yeah. plus, plus one, one damage. Three of that from the arrow, one of it from fire, one of it from lead Ooh. from the back. Oh, 11? Cool. Oh, <laughs> so you fire this flaming shaft straight through the middle of its thorax, uh, ah! and it just kind of thunks, and it seems to seem like it's scuttling down the far side of the tree. But then you realize it's coming down way too fast to be scuttling as it crashes into the ground. And its leg is kind of through that weird spider thing. Oh. <laughs> Wait, but... As it collapses dead on the <laughs> Regis Diamond, Regis Knight, Regis kills it all just right! Ah! <laughs> As you have slain, lots of legs eat goblin babies many. There's a reason why Chief Gutwad sent you all here. I kissed you all. Mwah, mwah, I couldn't have done it without you! No, <laughs> oh, you really couldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get everyone to make me a survival check, by the way, please? If you have survival. If you don't, it's just a wisdom check. Ignore that, please. Yes. I am not a survivor. Hey, 14. Sorry, what Very was the nice. roll if we don't have survival? Uh, it's just wisdom if you don't. But it's okay. Sean has seemed to have... Tra oh, um, we got two rolls there for some reason. Oh, uh, sorry. Three. All good. Um, so it seems that both um, we've got uh, Retta and Derp on this. They kind of praised the trajectory of where Lot's Legs was going. And they realize that you can actually see about 200 foot away what a big kind of webby tree. That's probably its lair. <gasps> kind of a soggy, mossy tree branches kind of thing. Look, look, tree covered in uh, fairy floss. Uh, delicious. <laughs> cool. Uh, by the way, we have had another donation. Thankfully, this Woo! one is for Trazzy. This is from AT. Thank you. Disadvantage because oh. mm, spoiler boyga. Spoiler boyga. <laughs> so just remember this one, Trazzy. Next roll you get disadvantage. Right, I'm gonna think um, about that. Cool. So you are, I assume, hurrying towards this uh, tree. I will get everyone to make me a perception check now to see if you can find anything in the tree. Mm -hmm. All right. If I were nuts legs, where I hide things? 14, a 3. 21. Yeah. No, 21 from red. Oh, yeah, you have crazy perception, don't you? Crazy perception. Cool. cool. So you're kind of looking around, and as you get towards this kind of tree, you realize it's almost like a deadfall of several old trees together, and scattered amongst them are dozens of bodies. Some of which are goblins, but there's even a few humans and long shanks in there. <gasps> and as you kind of go looking around, you can find 24 shiny gold pieces, which really for you guys is useless. They just look pretty. So you'll keep them. They're pretty. But what's more interesting is this beautiful, small-sized masterwork light crossbow. 
with 11 bolts. Ooh. You find a single pretty looking pearl worth 100 gold pieces. Again, it's shiny and pretty. Yay. But more importantly, you find one, two, three, four potions <gasps> and a wax paper sealed package, which seems to contain licorice flavored taffy. <laughs> it's pretty strong licorice, though. Um, we're out of initiative now, aren't we? Yes, yeah, so you're out of combat. Can I uh, take my potion of cure light wounds just to bring my um, HP back up? Yeah, so you roll a 1d8 plus 1, and that's how much health you will get from drinking your potion. I'll just roll that. Yeah. Cool. So that'll put you back up to full health then. Yeah. So yeah, you managed to track all these things down. Now, the gold and pearl, you guys can keep that if you want. But the more important things, as I said, was we have this masterwork light crossbow if anyone wants that, as well as four potions and the taffy. Can I figure out what the potions are by any chance? Yeah. You can make perception checks to figure out a potion, or if you have alchemy, since I know we have an alchemist, they can ah. definitely try as well. Rita, what you find there? You think things in vials. Let Zengo look. Zengo smartest. Zengo smartest goblin ever. No, all things in vials. I'll see you right. Yes, yes. I give you one. Okay. So you I want the crystal, I want the crystal. You yeah, you got it. You have the smacky thing. Whatever. And then you have the same. Craft alchemy, that's 15. 15? So two of the potions are the same type of potions, mm -hmm. and they're potions of cure moderate wounds. Oh. Those look delicious. <laughs> so yeah, the, the moderate wounds are 2d8 plus 3 hit points back instead of 1d8 plus 1. Owie. Hmm? Wait, uh, there's also two other potions, though. So wait, did, 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 did we do a separate check for them? Yep. Yep. Uh, that's 16, one higher. Cool, one sweet. Okay. There is a potion of get big and strong. Full potion strength. Get big and strong. Mm -hmm. Which gives you a plus four to your strength. Yep. And then, last one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. One more, one more craft alchemy check. Uh, oh, that's not good. That's a uh, 13. You don't know then. Does someone yeah. else want to try? I had a wrong sort of thing. Ah, this one. It's not make sense. I not see this one before. But I spellcraft them by any chance. You can spellcraft them if you have spellcraft, yeah. Sure, I'd like to try and spellcraft. Try survival and taste test. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's perception to taste test because you basically okay. doink. So that's so give... spellcraft. No idea. Nope, not helping you all. Retta, do you want to try perception it? Of course. Ooh. Oh, still not bad. What's that? 18. Cool. The last one you don't know. So it's a mystery potion. Ooh. This one? I say, holding up. This two make you feel better inside. I'm going to give them back to Rita. This one, make you get big. And I'm going to hand it to Derp. Mm. You know when to eat this. And this one makes you most powerful of ever. It holds <laughs> up like the random one. I want it. <laughs> and give it to Trazzy. Cool. Um, there was also the Taffy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> one piece each. There's six pieces. So you got one piece uh, each. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'll trade Taffy for um, uh, a firework boomstick. I get it's my no taffy. good. I've already tasted. Tastes like fire. <laughs> <laughs> I give you Taffy for a boomstick. Mm -hmm. I thought I was Taffy for my portion of the Taffy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you eating two pieces of Taffy? Just hang, 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 hang. are you? I'm right. I am. Yeah. Cool. The taffy is very, very strong licorice flavor, and you kind of feel it like rushing throughout your sinuses. You're just like, oh, I feel better now. <laughs> Remove the sickened condition. Oh, yes. yes. Medicinal taffy. You love to yes. see it. Yes. As you all feel much, much better. Beautiful. So you've all managed to defeat the terrifying Lot's Legs Eat Goblin Babies Many. And you're about like, eating many goblins, baby, is not so hard. It's not so scary. Oh. No. No! 
It's both stories. Can you tell? Maybe uh, Votra not so bad either. Hmm. Me not think Volk are real. Hmm. Real. Volk is scary. There many song about Volk. Just I because there many song doesn't mean Volk are real. Have you ever seen Volk? Have you? No. Have you ever oh. seen anybody who's seen Volk? Oh. Uh, Grandma. Grandma Goblin did. Yes. Oh, my. She oh, saw. Ma. And where are Omar now? The long legs. Oh, <laughs> not just babies. Uh, I, uh, I don't understand why she eat Goblin. I tried eating Goblin. No good. Mm, too tough. Not like slug. Mm, 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 mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe cool. it's just preparation. <laughs> <laughs> so you're making your way towards this location marked map, this wrecked ship. It's, you're about halfway there, so it only takes you another like you know hour or two to get there. And once you get there, you can kind of just hear the faint susurrus of waves in the background as you kind of get towards the end of the swamp towards the shoreline. The ship is very hard to miss. It is a large-looking kind of like. I guess, two-decked ship with, like, rigging and stuff above it as you come towards it. And there's this big, large, wrecked ship that's kind of lodged in this shallow pool of swamp water. So it, you're still quite a while away from the actual ocean. You're not quite sure how it got here, but it somehow did. And it's a two-mastered Chelish sailing vessel, which for you guys, eh, you don't know much, but it's a big boat. Big ship. And on the bow, written in a weird language that none of you can read, are some words. Again, you don't really know. But the ship, it looks quite old. It's probably been there for a couple of decades. Uh, as you kind of come creeping up towards it, you can see in the distance that there is this ship set up, but there's also these posts, like a fence around the outside. As you come up towards it, you can see that the ship's in this mud and in the clearing, the rigging is thick with moss, decorated with lanterns and wind chimes. But hanging from the rigging and from the pen around the outside, there's kind of this uh, fencing, are wind chimes made from goblins, skulls, and bones. <gasps> and there is this soggy, swampy yard that surrounds the wreck entirely by this rickety wooden fence. But what makes you more terrified is a thin curl of smoke wafting up from a chimney that protrudes from an unusual box-like structure near the ship's bow. So I'm going to let you guys see what this looks like. Um, let me just move this across. This isn't where you are on the map. It's just for mm-hmm. visuals. You should all be able to see in a moment. Oh, my. Cool. So you might need to scroll out a little bit to see everything. At the top, we have got the actual boat with the little pen around the outside. And if you look down the bottom, there is a picture of it in the background so you can kind of see what it looks like. So mm-hmm. if you just go down the very bottom, mm-hmm. you'll be able to see this um, oh. boat. So, yeah, as you kind of creep up towards it, you can see that in the distance. Such wonder. And being a curious little goblin, Zengo's going to try and crawl over the wall. Or are we at the, we at the gate? <laughs> so, yeah, you're probably coming in from the far left. It's just for the, the lighting. You can see the boat. I'll move you over to the far left. Yep. And this can be now where you actually are. So feel free to come up to the top section and oh, see what's going on. Look at this. This thing burns so well. And he's going to scuttle through. Zengo's just going to scuttle through the gate and up towards this big old structure. Oh. Um, give a good old sniff. See what it the the fire is burning in this chimney, correct? Yeah, well, it's it's there's yeah. a little curl of smoke, but you're quite a while away from it, and it's going up because that's how smoke works. Okay, so it's not going to get much of a sniff from where you are right now. Okay, so we can't smell necessarily burning wood. I mean, you or can make me a perception or... check to see what you notice. Yeah, go cool. twenty one. Beautiful. So you're kind of having a look out at the ship. You notice it's very damp and wet because it's in this muddy kind of area. But, you know, it should should be pretty handleable. Um, you just don't think it's going to burn particularly well. Uh, by the looks of things inside, the mud looks like it's been torn up quite a bit by something large. <laughs> okay. Not good here. Change decorating. Hmm. Track marks. Big beastie. Careful. 
So we all approached the ship now. So you guys are where you are on the map. If you want to, the gate is up here on the top. If you want to come through to the gate, feel free um, to. Yeah, start yep. tiptoeing towards the gate. Zengo is going to slip up to the gate and try and sneak away, like sneakily have a little peek around inside. Go, cool. make me a stealth check then. Oh, baby. With my Gobbo stuff, that becomes 29. Beautiful. So you're kind of taking a little bit of a peek out, looking through everything. And you think there might be something on the far side of the boat. You can kind of hear wet, slopping noises. Ah, oh, maybe there's some magic inside. Chief asked for magic items, yes? Big hug. Fireworks. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Maybe no fireworks here, but maybe something else. <laughs> oh, you'll go first. No, fireworks here on map. Uh, a boat, boat, a uh, big boom boat like this. Oh, big boom boat. Mm. Yes, 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 you're right. Mm. A spider. Oh, and fireworks here. And he's going to scuttle across towards the inside of the house then. then Beautiful. <laughs> we just got a new uh, wonderful role oh. for Zengo. Uh, uh-huh. Tagline Go Marshall. Zengo. <laughs> yeah. Disadvantage. I hope yeah. you have fun with that. Uh, uh, Let's save go. that for as you go rushing in. I'm going to let you all move inside so that you're all mm-hmm. slogging through the mud. You kind of slop, slop, slop mm-hmm. in. And yeah. then naturally, this disadvantage roll will probably come very in handy as you oh. roll so. for initiative. He it's advantage. Advantage. Oh, advantage. Yeah. Sorry, you get advantage on this well, one. At least somebody gives something. Your initiative roll. <laughs> as coming round the corner oh, is geez, this is. terrifying looking beast. It stands equivalent to like four times the <gasps> size as it comes <laughs> around the corner. And I'm going to need your older or only initiative as it locks its <gasps> demonic looking eyes at you Dumb. and you feel <sighs> fear race down your spine. Oh my God. Oh, good thing I rolled with advantage. Uh, I'm glad it's only initiative. Why is it always horses? <laughs> <laughs> One. So what did you get, Reta? Ret- Oof. Uh, for my initiative, it's a four. Thank God, because I just rolled in that one. Ooh, Luckily, okay. it's just initiative. Derp got a six. Mm. Trazzy got a 21. And what did you get? Zengo um, got a 17. 17. What did you roll with the advantage? What was the other one? Ah, uh, the other one was a one. Oh, there you <laughs> That's go. That's a one to 15, yeah. Um, is this scary horse, is it is it like looking like it's going to charge at us? Or is yeah, it... you're goblins. They don't like goblins. Mm. Ah. The feeling mm. is mutual. <gasps> yeah. But Frazzy, you get the first turn as this terrifying beast. <laughs> I really can't do a horse sound. As it comes <laughs> trotting towards the sky. What are you going to do? Yeah, that one. Cool. Well, with the clever sort of. Ah! I'm going to jump behind the gate and take cover. And use your lead from the back, I assume? My lead from the back, so everyone gets plus one to damage. So you run and hide and yell, Get it! As you do, which makes it time for the terrifying stomp of the horse to come rearing towards you. <laughs> oh, Rears up day. and then tries to kick out towards the front runner, which is currently Zengo. Oh, oh. And it lashes out. I don't know why it's rolling twice for some reason. Uh, that's a bit odd. Cool. As oh, it lashes out it. towards you. <clears throat> yep. That is a 17 to hit. Oof. That'll hit. Right, As you get a hoof straight ah. to the middle of your chest, doing four points of damage oh. as it cracks into you. Ah, it is no. now your turn. All right. Uh, my turn. Zengo is going to five foot step back. Nasty stump, you go burn! And he's going to whip out once more a, another one of his vials from his bandolier. This time he's just going to smush them together and throw it at the horsey. Cool. And with the great age old adage of yeet, yeet, yeet to the stump. Uh, that's a natural two. So oh. that'll probably not hit uh, with a six. Six. Or six. Cool. Where were you aiming? Just for the middle of the target? I would have just aiming at, like, probably at its head because it just, like, ran and stopped. Okay. In which me. case, roll me a D8 to see if you throw it long or short. Yep. Eight. Eight. So eight is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It lands here then. 
So minimum splash Which means doom. it will take minimum damage, I believe, is five. Is that correct? Uh, four. It was five because of the Bernie burn from... Oh, uh, okay. Trassi. Beautiful. Yeah. So, well, you still have that on, technically, because you just used Leap in the Back. Oh, she's... Yeah, so sweet. So, so five, points, five of points of damage as it explodes next to its head and it just kind of whinnies out. Mm -hmm. Derp, you're up next. All right. So, with the... Uh... Confidence in, of the of the taffy, the licorice taffy, still in my mouth, and the inspiration that's given me. Uh, Derp has the confidence to to run and charge up to this horse, saying, mm, "Chief Big Head, Real Rame Supreme," <laughs> and charges up to jump on and latch onto the front of this horse with his teeth, giving a massive savage bite. Go on, make a bite check. Oh, wow. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah. So you just leap up at this horse like, ah, mouth first, and just straight into, like, the hodge of it. And it just, yeah, screams out as your teeth sink into it, and the blood just pouring out. You're just like, ah! Retta, it's your turn. Um, I see this, and I think, yeah, I, I ride piggy, not so scary. I kill spidey, not so scary. <laughs> I want to ride! And I get out my uh, 20 feet of rope with dead moles into it, and I'm like trying to lasso this thing. <laughs> yes. I'm whipping it. I'm like, Pussy, come to me! And I throw it. Do, what, what do I do for if I'm... So this is going to be a CMB, what's called a combat mm. maneuver bonus check. Okay. And you're going to have to beat its CMD, which is defense. Now, if you're trying to, like, grapple it so you can, like, ride on it kind of thing... Yeah. Yeah, like, so go for it. Lasso to hold ride. on and ride, yeah. So yeah. just D20? It's, uh, so it's 1d20 plus your CMB, which I believe for Retta plus is one. going to be plus one. Yeah. Okay. So D20 oh. plus one. Uh, nine. Cool. Mm. So you throw this rope over and the, and the horse just kind of flicks its head and you just go, <laughs> as the like 20 times the size of you animal just shakes its head and you just, <laughs> and you end up like flying 10 foot away. How <laughs> crazy. Um, Cool. Trazzy, your turn as Retto is just like, ah, 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 <laughs> as this rope just sends her flying. What are you going to do? Oh, uh, uh, seeing her flying. Uh, the, from here, what am I going to do? I'm going to pull out my glorious, now slightly dented silver spoons and start clacking them again. And I'm going to start up my bardic performance. Beautiful. Ah! Everyone's weapons catch on fire. <laughs> yeah. It is the horse's turn. I believe there is currently a goblin attached to it. So it is going to try take you off. And then it rears up both hooves this time and lashes out at you. I still don't get why it's rolling twice, but that's beneficial because there are two of them. So the first one is going to be a 13 to hit, and the second one's a four. Uh, that is it. Is it hitting us both? Well, no, they're both aiming towards the person that just bit them. Oh. Yeah. Um, so 15, did you say? 13 and 14. And four. Not, neither of them. Right. Yeah. So Ew. both of these hooves lash out, both miss. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, which makes it Zengo, Zip Wap's turn. Wait, so he's going to reach into his bag and or his little side satchel that he's got, and he's going to pull out the Skyrocket. <laughs> and he's going to step five foot steps so he's not right next to Derp, and he's going to hold the Skyrocket at the, at the big old stompy horse. And then with a whipping out, I guess, like some sort of flint or steel, he's going to light the Skyrocket. Beautiful. Let so it go. This, the wick starts to sizzle. It hey. doesn't shoot until next turn. Yep. So wait, I'm just sitting there holding it at cool. the thing. So Derp, behind you, there is just this flash of light and white sparks as this fire rocket starts to hey. wind up. What are you going to mm. do? Well, I want to be biting again, but this time I want to be sure that I'm like using this bite as a, as a means to kind of climb up onto its back because I want to be grappling this thing. You want to try and grapple it? Grapple it with my mouth, yes. <laughs> mouth grapples. So yes. you need to try and make sure you've got a good hold on it first, and then you can try and bite it. Okay, so, so I've already a got a good check. hold with my mouth. All right. Uh, yeah, you need the, the grab property one. to do that technically. So Okay. Uh, do you have that in my thingy? Hey, baby. CMB. So CMB. it's just going to be a, right. CMB, a CMB And that's not going to work. <laughs> no, so you're trying to grab onto it, and the horse just kind of shakes Fine. you off. It's mm. very hard to scale something that's but 20 times your size. Tufts of horse hair in my teeth as I yes. fall off. Uh, Retta, your turn. Okay. Um, 
So I'm, am I still, I'm still swinging from this horse. Yeah. I mean, you, you've still got the rope around it. You can either let go or you can keep on trying to hold on up to you. Uh, I'm going to try and get closer. I want to ride this thing and control it from the back. Um, okay. So what would, what would I roll for that? So you make me another CMB check as you're trying to like wrangle it somehow with this rope. All right. I'm trying to tame this bad boy. There yeah. you go. So you yeah. manage to like plant your feet and you take like a running jump and you like loop the rope around its neck. Yeah. And you land on its back basically. Just being I have like, that hat again from the yeah. pig. I'm like, <laughs> As you're technically grappling the horse somehow, I don't quite get how, <laughs> but hair. you wrap this rope like around its legs and it's all like bound up. So on its turn, all it can basically do is try and escape pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you're like riding onto it. Trezzy, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. Trezzy pulls out of her little bag her magical, beautiful good luck juju stick, which is <laughs> cure light wounds. She goes, all right, back, and points it at Zengu, who needs a little bit of healing. I'm going to oh. let that off. Mm. Cool. Ah, so that? You need to poke him. It's touch range. Oh, oh okay. Uh, hmm. If I have to poke him, I will move back around, which means everyone loses their bonus from lead from the back, unfortunately. But I'll give him a stabby stab with my good luck juju stick. Which is... 1d8 plus 1. Four points back. You! Four points ahead points back as the juju oh. stick heals you back up. Why I feel good? Why I feel good? Ah! Oh! <laughs> Meanwhile, you're just <laughs> holding on to this rocket. <laughs> Sweet. So it no, is I got <laughs> currently Stomp's turn, and Stomp is going to attempt to buck you off. So what is your CMD, Retta? Um, it is 14. It got a 13. <laughs> so it tries to buck you, just like, woohoo, <laughs> And Zengo, I believe, then the firework goes off. Yeah. Zengo's going to do a quick bit of, like, calculus in his head to find, try and figure out the best trajectory. <laughs> Goblin calculus. Firework. Yeah. Quite honestly, Globulous. I don't think Globulous. you can fire this thing without hitting, like, two oh, of your friends. Everybody. Go for it. Oh! Burn me more. Let it go. It just makes me angrier. <laughs> yeah. Let it go towards the horse. Mm. Oh. Whatever control. Char grill. Yeah. So it just goes flying straight towards the horse. You guys look at it and you just realize, oh shit. <laughs> I'm going to need all of you to make me a reflex save to see if you can jump out of the way of this. It's a DC 15. If you get above 15, you take half damage. Mm -hmm. oh, no, Trazzy, you're fine. So is uh, Zengo. It's just going to be Derp and Ooh, 8 plus 3, 11. 11. It hit me. Derp got a 6. Mm. Stomp got an 18, so somehow the horse who gets hit by it takes half damage, but you guys <laughs> take full. Well, you fired it, Zengo. Roll me 2d6 fire damage. <laughs> oh. oh, does this count as an alchemical weapon as well? Technically. That's an ever d4 on top of that. Because so 2d6 plus 1d4? Yeah, plus 1. So <laughs> no, that's 8, 10, 11. Did you include cool. my three, four, fire damage from my bardic performance? Uh, uh, it's technically no. not a weapon that he's wielding. It's a separate yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Probably for the best. Uh, so 11 fire damage? Yes. Which we means it burn, takes burn. five. We and then I need both of you to roll me 1d100. Both Ritter and Derp? Yep. Yep. If you get above 50, you are blind. Below 50, you are deaf. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. As this firework just careens into the horse, explodes. Derp goes one direction. Retta goes the other. <laughs> and the horse just rears up before falling over backwards, slightly smoldered and steaming on the background. <laughs> so you horse both take on. 11 damage from that. <laughs> Everything's back! I'm dead! I'm dead! I'm going to Goblin Heaven! Ah! I have so many later, things you I want to see again. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm standing there crispy. I've got only a few strands of hair left. My veil is completely like charred and burnt. And I'm somehow my wedding dress is still a little bit intact, but she is completely charred. Just, <laughs> it's, ah! it's tastefully like here and like. <laughs> 
Mm. You said there was 11 damage too, right? 11 damage. The yeah. two of you are looking particularly crisp right now as mm. this horse just collapses. I pop that um, potion of me- medium light. Pure moderate? Medium, moderate? <laughs> yeah. medium wound. <laughs> moderate. So it's that. 2d8 plus 3 healing as you kind of scramble for it. You're just like, gah, gah, gah. 2d8 plus 3. I might use the same because we have two of them, right? There you go. Yeah, beautiful. So you're back up to full health then. Magic potions are very useful. Yeah, thanks, dude. <laughs> thanks, well. So, uh, plus 3, so that's 10 plus hit three. points for you. Easy. Beautiful. So you both chug your potions and look at the terrifying beast you have brought low. Thanks to power of fire! Fire go boom! Zenga yeah. goes and dances on the corpse. Reda starts dancing, yeah, like a like around it. As <laughs> if it's a bonfire. Beautiful. And you guys, can I get a perception check from you all? <laughs> 18. 18. Seven. Ooh, not great. Oh, well, uh, 21. 21. Sweet. So, 18, 21, you are aware of yourself enough to hear a sound coming from the deck of the ship. <gasps> Matter of fact, Retta, you almost laser onto this. Yeah. <laughs> coming ah! from the ship. Where? The dogs are near. <laughs> she pulls out a dog slicer. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So up on the ship, you can hear the barking of dogs. <gasps> Not dogs. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Dogs go burn. But we fight horse. Who wants a few dogs? Let's sneak up on them and stab, 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 stab. <gasps> you just set up a firework. Mm. <laughs> 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 really good Very good Very good point. <laughs> So, so the dogs, everybody knows that dogs are scared of fireworks. Yeah. The, the, Most the, people the be scared of fireworks. They blow up. <laughs> <laughs> what if cool. fireworks on ship? <clears throat> oh, so, where are you guys going? Sneak on ship. Sneak on ship. Stealth. <laughs> I scream as I try to stealth. Scream and try to stealth. Yep, that sounds like goblin reasoning. Yeah. Beautiful. So, are you guys heading up the gangplank? I assume to get there. There's this vine choked gangplank with kind of mossy um, handrails that descends mm. sharply from the ship's bow to the muddy ground below. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... One side of it seems to be encrusted with large balls of mud. I'm going to stop for a second and I'm going to whip out a torch and a vial of alchemist's fire before we go further. Are you nice. going to light said torch on fire before you go up? Uh, yeah, I'll light said torch. I was cool. like, ah, ah, Rassi, you make this fire? <laughs> Beautiful. So you guys go heading up. Can I get a perception check as you go climbing up? You actually have to climb this gangplate. It's very steep. Oh, thank God I've got a ring of climb real good. Yeah. <laughs> ring that lets you climb real good. 18. Cool. 18 for, is that the climb or the perception? Perception. Perception? Beautiful. Uh, do you have knowledge nature? Does anyone have knowledge nature? I do. No. Okay, you can roll me knowledge nature. Yeah, so do I. Sweet. <laughs> climb, climb, climb. Everyone has climbed. Beautiful. Uh, has everyone climbed? We're missing a climb. I, I, I haven't, haven't climbed, climbed it. Climbed. I haven't climbed it. Okay, beautiful. So as everyone goes to go climb up, though, Zengo... <laughs> That big ball of mud? That's a wasp's nest. Oh, hey, Dutton. Spicy bees. Yeah. Spicy bees. Spicy bees. I hit it. You eat it? I'm going to throw my torch at the, at the uh, wasp's nest. Oh. You're going to light the torch on fire? Yep, I'm going to light the light torch on fire, on fire, and I'm going to throw the torch at the wasp's nest. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run to under the wasp nest with my mouth open, just hoping to catch the sizzling wasps as they fall out. Smoked spicy bee. Sure. <laughs> I got a twelve to hit wasp nest. That'll hit a wasp nest. So you throw this at it, and you, uh-huh. yeah, you kind of knock it off. It doesn't catch on fire because you just I'm just gonna threw a torch at it. it. It doesn't automatically like do that. <laughs> well, actually, and it falls down. Actually, my old. I do I do damage with my torches of 1d2 plus 1d4 plus 
Well, it was falling off anyway. You hit it. Okay. It just doesn't fall off. Doesn't set on fire. Come on, man. I mean, look, it's it's definitely smacked and it's like you know burning, but it's also plummeting towards. I want these wasps right to now. just be like a little bit charred by. They the can be a little bit charred. Derp's so, mouth. Derp, you open your mouth and just golf as this wasp just falls into it, and you guys just hear this. <laughs> As his cheeks start to like bulge, and everything's going fine until they start to sting you. Roll me a fortitude save. Okay. It's a little tough to get through, but and the crunch. How? What? You just managed to chew. Nom 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 nom. And what should have been a fifteen-foot burst of wasps is now food. <laughs> That you somehow are is like fine for all. <laughs> Big head, sad. iron stomach. That's what they call me. There you go. <laughs> I tell you, Dub, you be new chief. You eat anything. <clears throat> and when you're new chief, you need advisor. One with smart smarts to make plans, yes? And bombs. Yes, but no eaty, just make plans. Yeah. Yes, yes. Food, food for Big Head. Zingo no eat. <laughs> <laughs> and keep you around. And then Zengo like rubs his hands together behind his back. <laughs> oh, Zengu, Zengu, you need advisor for advisor. Oh, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> advisor for advisor, love mm-hmm. it. Beautiful. So you all go climbing up this gangplank. And we're going to move the map a little bit to get you there. I'm going to zoom you all down to the bottom. As you scramble up onto the main deck of the shipwreck, which is cluttered with objects, both natural and artificial, thick swaths of leafy vines grow over the deck, shiny green patches of algae and moss grow where the vines do not. The central cabin's roof has a wide circular edge creating a canopied walkway along the ship's sides. There's a flight of stairs up to the roof of one of the ship's main cabins, the entrance to which is blocked by a door, which you kind of can't see from here, but it's around the far side. Above you, you can see a smoking stovepipe chimney that extends from the ship's highest point. It's pretty much directly above where you are now. Hmm. Oh. Red dogs! Red dog. I do perception check for the dogs. Cool. Well, the dogs, uh, you can hear barking from the other side of this kind of area. Okay. Ooh. Zengo, before we go any further, Zengo is going to, I'm going to reach into my little satchel that's hanging off my bandolier, and he's going to pull out, like, a strange, slimy, goopy substance, which is dripping a little bit, little bits of green and purple. <sighs> oh, goes nasty. Need more power! And Zengo is going to eat it. And I'm going to eat my con- consume my mutagen. Oh, right. <laughs> and ah, we're taking b- performance enhancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I reach, <laughs> uh, reach and grab out my this uh, this potion of make you big. Uh-huh. Drink. Yeah, yeah. Drink. Make good. Make big. Oh. And guzzles down potion of make you big. Cool. So it's the potion of bull's strength. It gives you a temporary plus four to your strength. Sick. So you can add that in. Um, so I can, I, after Zango imbibes the, the squishy, mushy stuff, his muscles just get like. His muscles. Muscles. <laughs> muscles. His muscles get like. No, they don't get bigger, but they get like more sinuous and like toned. And he's just. Ah! He looks very sharp, but he looks a little bit like out of it, like a little bit spaced. <laughs> Beautiful. Meanwhile, uh, for our wonderful friend Derp, you currently have plus four to your strength for three mm. minutes. Uh, and how big did I get? You don't grow <laughs> physically larger. It's not a size increase. It's just alchemical. So basically, you get like roided up. It's just all your Swole. veins pop. Everything <laughs> kind of swells. Okay. Your testicles shrink. Yeah. Uh, all that kind of that stuff. like Leo DiCaprio vein pop in your yeah. forehead. Mm. <laughs> Cool. Everyone loves performance enhancement drugs. As you've clambered up the front. Roided. Cool. Ooh. All right. So um, I'll, I'll charge forward then uh, around the side here. 
Okay, well, for charge again, I'm going to need everyone to make me some initiative rolls, please. Oh, well, we're that. charging around. We're not quite there yet, but yes. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll just get the initiative rolls. Well, let's anyway. just get it out of the way. <laughs> initiative 18. 18, very nice. Let's pop I'm sniffing like crazy, too. <laughs> the scent of their fur is driving her a little bit more insane than usual. Beautiful. So we're going to go top of the round. So Retta, uh, you're up as, you know, yeah. um, Derp goes running around. You can move as well. Go. Oh. Um, okay. We go find, we find, we find these dogs and, and, and we, we burn and we eat. Yes. Mm, yes, mm, delectable. Burn and eat. That may be hot. Maybe horse after. Okay, I take out my dog slicer, and um, can I can I see any dogs? Are we still like like sort of walking up to them? Yeah, you're still moving, so you'll have to kind of move around mm -hmm. and see what you can find. Okay. So I'm kind of sneaking around this top side here, kind of in front of the pack. Sneaking's maybe not the best word. But uh, yeah, I'm moving yeah. around this side, uh, front of the pack, and uh, I kind of when I see, if I see a dog, I'll stop there. Um, I'm gonna just ready um, an attack with my dog slicer. Um, if I see a dog, I'll just charge at it and try to go for his head. Okay, so you want to move round first, though, and then if you, yeah. something comes at yeah. you, you can slash it. Yeah. Uh, what, what do I roll for that? So you just got to move yourself. Uh, you yeah. can move yourself up to 30 foot and ready one if you want to. So you can move up to here or you can yeah. like double move and just like try and find the dog. Yeah, I'm going to just go crazy and find the dog actually and double move. Cool. So in which case, feel free to move yourself until you run into a dog. Yeah. She's nuts. Have I found one? Well, <laughs> do you want me to move you or do you want me to move yourself? Oh, no. Can you move me? Cool. <laughs> So you make yourself down around the outside, and then as you kind of come around, you can see the back over here. There uh, is a mast, and chained to that mask is a dog. Mm -hmm. As it looks up towards you, and Tickle Tooth the dog sees you as it kind of growls. It's this scruffy-looking mongrel as you come around towards it. Now, you can run straight up to it, so you're directly adjacent to it if you want to, mm. with your movement. You know, dog slicer route ready to go. We won't be able to hit it this turn because you've moved too far, but you can charge straight up to it. And it's chained. It is chained, but it's like quite a long chain. Uh, can it get to me from where I'm standing? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. I stand woof, woof. Ah! And then I, yeah, charge up it and try to go for my dog slicer. Cool. So yeah, you'll just, you won't be able to stab it this turn, but you can run up to it. Beautiful. Yeah, I'll run. So Trazzy, it's your turn. You heard that apparently they have found dogs. I found wolf wolf. Oh, mm, mm. oh, dogs, dogs, not good. Dogs, not good. Uh, I'm going to move to start with. So let's go here. Yeah. Move up my 30 feet. I still don't see anything. So I am going to pull out my trusty silver spoons. <laughs> Start up with my performance again. Dwayne, uh, Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne. Cool. I'm going to use my blazing blades, which is the D4 damage again. Beautiful. Well, it is Tickletooth's turn, and it has been given a tasty-looking treat to try and bite. So it lashes out towards our oh. wonderful uh, Retta over here. What is your armor class, Retta? Uh, 16. So it misses as it bites towards you, and it somehow, like, gnaws onto some of your armor as you kind of, like, ah, shove it off. Um, so, yeah, it missed. Beautiful. Uh, Zingo, it's your turn. <laughs> Wait, Zango's going to stand for a second. Rita, Trazzy, Rita, Trazzy. Trazzy make burn! And he's going to run after Trazzy. Woo. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Get about there. He's going to keep running right now because he's feeling pretty not very wise after imbibing his thing. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> and that's all you can do. Full ding cool. as you yeah. run, you duck underneath like a, yeah. a ladder leading up oh, to the next oh, floor. Oh, oh. Yep. Slide oh, under it. Woohoo! Things go boom! And then Derp, we got your turn. 
Cool. All right. So seeing the doggo at the back of the boat here, you know, charge forward, screaming out my biting, chewing, jumping faces. <laughs> charge forward to give it the big old chomp on the ear, just to you know show it, show it who the boss. Show is. it who's boss. So you charge up towards it and you try and bite, but you don't manage to hit. Unfortunately, you kind of like, uh-huh. and the dog kind of ducks behind this area, which brings us to the top of the round. And then from the deck above you, you hear further loud barking sounds. And this dog oh, no. like launches itself basically off the top area, <gasps> but it's got a chain on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it tries to jump off and it just goes as it kind of tugs. And let's see if it breaks out. It does not break out. So you can see this dog snarling at you from just above where you guys hear. If you look up a little bit, you'll be able to like up a little bit, it's just above you. Um, pretty much just where this uh, ladder leads. Mm-hmm. Another dog is just snarling and biting. Uh, Trazzy, it's your turn. Oh, uh, hmm. Two doggers, right? So there's Two. one above you guys and then one below. Cool. I am just checking the range of this one. Uh-huh. So I have ear piercing scream. So I'm going to look at the doggo directly above me and go... <laughs> oh, so you can't see it from where you are right now. You're going to have to move because it's, like, literally above you. Let's <laughs> move to here. So if you can get out here, you'll be able to just see it. Yeah, I'll jump into there. Up uh, here. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong square. That is my yeah. bad. Otherwise, you're looking, like, through a rooftop. <laughs> yeah, it's technically, like, here, but up a floor. Cool. Could I hit it with so, my increasing screen from there? Yeah, you can do it. Awesome. As long as you can see it. So, great deep breath and... Ah! <laughs> Beautiful. Now, I believe with you, it's wow. not just sonic damage, is it? Not, no. Because I'm a flame singer bard, the singing is flame, right? So That's you like... basically burp out a giant belch of flame. <laughs> 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 as this plume of fire flies towards it. So is it, uh, what's the save I have to make? I believe the ear piercing stream, I will click the button and we can have a look. Cool. So I need to make a, a fortitude save on the doggo. I got an 18, so I take partial. What does it do? So it is days one round, takes 1d6 points of damage, successful save, negates it, and halves the damage. So you rolled maximum damage, so I take three points of fire damage, and I'm not dazed as you blast this dog with fire somehow from down below. As it just <laughs> whimpers out in pain a little bit. Very nice. Retta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am um, with my dog slicer. I'm going to go up to this just- one next. You're using the Gorge of Gluttons, right? The anti-dog dog slicer. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, what was the stats for that one again? So versus dogs, it's actually a plus six to hit. 1d4 damage plus 2d6 damage plus four. Whoa. Yeah. 1d4 plus 1d6. Okay, I'm going to do this manually. Just yeah, see if you hit first. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, 1d20. And I think I've got plus two on a because it's my... The you know dogs is my thing. Um, yeah. So against dogs, you have dog sniff hate as one of your things, which gives you an additional plus one to hit. One. So it. you actually have plus seven to hit. Oh my god. Okay. So plus seven. Roll seventeen. Beautiful. So you stab your dog slicer. Well, I guess you slice your dog slicer into I the slice. dog. <laughs> and I just realized with the amount of damage that you're doing, then you're going to roll me one d four. Yeah. And then two d six. Plus six. Oh. Plus, okay, let's do that. Um, I'll do two D sixes plus six. Um, and then I'll roll my D four here. So 15 plus four. 20. Wait, 19. Oh. 19. 19 damage. points of damage. Cool. So you jump up to it, and this gorge of gluttons almost seems like magnetically drawn to the dog. And you slice into it, and there's this like shackle of like a like almost red light as you slice into it, and it just instantly hits the deck. Like Ooh. life has just been stolen from it. It's just slink. Retta, Retta has new power. Retta has new powerful weapon and new power. 
Red's the most powerful dog size ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Beautiful. Uh, sweet, so that was Retta. You then have Zengo. Sweet, so this, there's, a, there's a doggo up here. There is a doggo just up there's there. There's the yeah. ladder lead up to that. The ladder does. So if you, the ladder will oh, take you to the next there. floor up. Ah, me get doggo, me make burn. No, no, no. Yeah. If, you just, if you look up a little bit, okay. you can see the next floor. Look up a bit. Um, On the map. Ah, yes. Oh, get out of there. Yes, yes, yes. Can I go up here? <laughs> Yeah, so that's it's the same deck up there. So if you guys want to, you could be up there. Yeah, so, so you just climb five, up. Five, ten, fifteen. Ah, cool. So if you're scurrying up there, it'll try and uh, uh no, technically it doesn't get an attack opportunity against you because you were climbing the ladder. So you well, scurry I'll climb up there, the ladder, and then I'll growling. move past it though. Ah! Oh, well, that that then it'll definitely try and bite yep. you as you run past it. Nine, no hit. No hit. Ha ha! And then I will take out my the take the 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 flask of alchemist fire that I have. And I will throw it at the doggo. Cool. So you yeet this vial at it, uh, oh, which yeah. unfortunately is going to Misses. miss the dog. Yep. Here's the big question. Roll me a D8 to see if you get <laughs> it narrow it or over the edge towards bad, your friend. Bad, bad. One. I rolled a one on the D8. One means directly up. So thankfully it lands just here, which will oh. do minimum damage to everything around it. Which is four damage to that. Oh, no, it's five, actually. Five is minimum damage. Five da uh, hang on. You didn't use your lead from the back, did you? Um, no, no, yeah. but it's just it's 1d6 plus 4. Oh, so, so it should be 5 five then, five. Yeah. 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 So it explodes and you miss, but it still basically blows the dog <gasps> up as it gets sent flying. <laughs> ah, doggy burn! And then I just chill there. Cool. So, Derp, you're kind of looking around. Everything seems dead. Can I get a perception check from you? Uh, okay. 20. Nice. A 20. So you kind of like, huh, huh? And then you hear the door behind you open. Who's that? And as you turn around, I'm just going to get rid of the dynamic lighting now to make it a little bit easier for everyone. <laughs> behind you opens up a sight which you weren't even sure was real. Oh. A terrifying beast, <gasps> Vorka, as she cackles. And gets added to the initiative order. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! She's got goblet blood in her teeth! I can smell it! It's not good! Too much iron! Mm. <laughs> As she looks out towards you and is, <laughs> Oh, tasty snacks, are you? Mm. Kind of licks her lips, looks at uh, who's the closest one? Yeah, so I, I guess it would actually be Derp to be the closest. Yeah. She yeah. looks at you with your giant head. She's just like, oh. I must say, you look very tasty. I wonder what it would taste like if we shoved your head full of eyeballs and boiled it! <laughs> Get him, Lord Longtongue! And her animal companion, Lord Longtongue, the giant frog, <laughs> is going to come a hopping, doink, doink, out, landing heavily on the deck, turning towards you, and is going to attempt to bite you. No, we lick toads, not other way round. Ah! This is a frog, not a toad. That was an 18 to hit. <laughs> you gotta give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, say that again. How much damage? An 18 to hit. Uh, it's gonna hit, yeah. 12 points of damage. Oh! And it's going to attempt to grapple you. Oh! Something tells me it's not gonna have a hard time trying. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. So you're on zero hit points, which means yeah. you're staggered. Any standard action will make you take one fall of point of damage and fall unconscious. But I know you have the feet, ankle biter. Which I is absolutely anytime do. Anytime someone makes a combat maneuver check against you, you can bite them as a free action. So if I you can. want to bite back, you can, but you will guarantee take one point of damage and fall unconscious. Yeah, he's an ankle biter through and through. Sure. <laughs> that's that's what he does. Bite check as it tries to swallow you. Oh, not swallow you, just like get you in its mouth. Uh, that would be a sorry CMB, right? No, so you just bite normally. I just bite normally? So cool. 21 will definitely hit. So as it bites, ah! you, you bite it almost as you're like passing Ever heard out of dead man's grip? frenzy. Yeah. Chomp into it doing 10 <laughs> points of damage, but it got a natural 20. So you are now in its mouth. And yeah, it's just holding your unconscious body in its mouth as your negative one hit points. Oh. Retter, it's your turn. 
Ow. <laughs> Um, I haven't. I don't think I've seen this, but I can hear it. Right? Um, it's right next to you. It's right next to you. Oh, Probably. I thought it was up, upstairs. No, no, that was the dog upstairs. Oh, okay. Um, this angers Redder deeply. <laughs> I uh, hope so. Just like, and right. she's she's gonna try and save her friend. Get out! Don't touch him! He's not gonna touch his mind! Ah! And then she uh, charges Dog Slicer straight up. Um. This evil, evil thing. Lord Long Tongue. Lord Long Tongue. She's gonna go for. Oh hell, Lord Long Tongue. One d twenty. Is it one d twenty? Oh no, it's not a dog, is it? So it's not a dog. So you still get the Gorgia Glutton's benefits, which is plus four to hit instead of plus six or seven oh. against dogs. But Thirteen. Thirteen. So you slash out at it, but you don't manage to stab through its thick tough hide as you stab into it. She's a little startled by this, I think, is what's thrown her off. Yeah. Seeing um, her friend get taken out so quickly and her being fried so many times. This is scaring her now, actually. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Frazzy, it's your turn. Uh, 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 mm. uh, also doesn't like the fact that, you know, a future, a future chief is in the mouth of this yeah. <laughs> five foot step forward. In towards the frog and is going to belch at it. Just <laughs> straight up, right in its face. It needs to make a DC 12 fortitude save or be sickened for 1d6 rounds. Oh, nice. Natural 19. Uh, Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work. So you took a five foot uh, step in, did you as well? I did, yes. Cool. So you walk up towards it and you belch at it. But it seems like Lord Long Tongue is too powerful for your puny tricks. Uh, Zengo, zip whap. Oh, this is, this is gonna downstairs. be this is gonna be bad. Zengo's an impasse right now, so he's gonna roll uh, d4. Um, one to two is higher, higher, higher. Three to four is help everybody else. Mm. Okay. <laughs> one. Zengo runs towards this ladder here. Five, ten, fifteen, and climbs up this ladder. Uh, to the very so top. Starts okay. heading to the very top. What's at the top? So you and th- probably saved everyone's here, life. <laughs> and then if you climb at the very top, you're just getting on the top of the boat. Oh, yeah. I climb up there. So I use much of my movement. I use my move action to get up there. Yeah. So you get up the top there. there, and you just you see the top of the boat and like the view from the top there. Oh, it's not so. No fireworks. And then he's going to um, scuttle back down. Five, it does attach, seven. however, hmm? to the rigging. Along the side. Oh of the yeah, ship. I'm gonna try and climb mm. the rigging. Cool. So what was you were here? So you went yeah, five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You're climbing up the rigging. Yep. Twenty-five, thirty to get to the top of the rigging, and then if you yep. want to, you can try and make an acrobatics check to move across the rigging. Yep. Hey, he's got seven wisdom right now. He's skipping across the wi- he's skipping across cool. the rigging. <laughs> make me an acrobatics check. Ah, uh, that's a six. In total? Two, yeah, it's in total sick. I have rolled so bad on my So you're chest, like, so. yeah, kaponk, ow, as you fall off, basically. Ah! <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, it's a uh, it's only a DC 5 climb check to climb up there, but then, yeah, you need to make a DC 10 acrobatics check to actually yeah. stay up. Wow, wow. Um, what you did notice, though, when you were up there was it looks like there was something in this little platform over here. <gasps> cool. Wait, beautiful. That's my turn. Uh, Derp, you're currently unconscious. I'm going to need you to make me a constitution check. Mm-hmm. See if you stabilize or if you bleed out. Thing. I cool. assume it's just my body that's inside of this uh, this frog and my gigantic head. It's got your head in there right now. and I Oh, it's got the head as tongue. well. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> So yeah, you've bit it um, as you're unconscious, but you're no longer you're not bleeding out. You're stable as long as you don't take any more damage. Mm. Cool. Big, big if. Uh, next up, we <laughs> have got if. no more fireworks. Vorka. Close. <laughs> Vorka kind of laughs as he sees that you have been consumed. He says, yeah, ha, ha, ha. Good boy, eat. Um, but on her for her actual turn, she is going to uh, hold out her hand, and you notice that there's like a. Sp- flame just kindled in her grip and she flings this towards Greta as this fire just comes surging towards you give me all you got i love fire what's your touch ac 
Um, 14. Cool. And you manage to dive out the way of this little <laughs> beef of fire as it zooms past you. And Borky kind of goes, ah, very unhappy that she missed. And then turns towards Lord, Long, Lord Longtongue and goes, eat! And Lord Longtongue is going to try and swallow. <gasps> so you are technically grappled. All it needs to do is confirm its grapple to swallow you. What is your CMD at the moment taking away your dex? Um... No, not you. This is uh, Derp, sorry. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That's my CMD take away the day. It's uh, 16. Cool. So it's got you in its mouth, and it's trying to swallow you, but it can't quite get you down because of your stupidly sized head. <laughs> and they said it would never come in handy. <laughs> Beautiful. It only it got a 15, by the way, because it gets plus four because it's grappling. So it missed by one, I believe, <laughs> as it's Still trying to it. swallow you. Uh, Retter, it's your turn. Um, I'm going to use my dog classer again. Uh, and I'm just going, I'm, I want to help the pretty badly. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one D four plus four. So yeah, if you're trying to stab it, uh, you got to roll to hit first. So for you, it's going to be one D 20 plus four. Yep. 17. That'll hit as you oh. stab it in the side and you do 1d4 plus 2 damage. 1d4 plus 2 damage. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> 3 damage as you shiver it in the side, kind of as you give it a good old stab. Trazzy, your turn. Cool. Uh, nope, don't like this. Gonna five foot step up and around this corner here, so I get partial cover, I believe, from there. So, so everyone... you can't five foot step through a corner, unfortunately. Ah, oh, damn. Can I five foot step... I'll five foot step back then. That's okay. Yo, so you kind of huddle underneath the uh, railing there? Well, that the, the ladder. From the back? Yeah, you can five foot step uh, here or here, just not there. Oh, that's fine. Cool. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to chug this mystery potion. Oh! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Risk taker. Cool. So, you, so where did you go? Sorry, you haven't moved yet. Sorry, I thought Sweet. I really So not. you take a step back, you chug this mystery potion, you feel your body fill with vigor. You get plus four to your constitution for the next three minutes. Yeah! So potion of bear's endurance it was. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Zengo Zipwap. Okay, I'm going to try and climb. I see it. I see the prize. And I'm going to make another attempted climb check. I mean, I had the acrobatics. It. Oh, that's way better. That's 22. That is all you need to do, 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 <laughs> across the things as you kind of scuttle along there and you've made yourself along the rigging towards this little platform up here. So it's nice and stable once you've gotten there. And you look down into this uh, little platform and there are things in here, tasty things. <gasps> Two vials of alchemist fire. <laughs> a half-finished bottle of grog. <laughs> Three Desden <coughs> candles. Huh? Yeah, that's Sweet. it. <laughs> and you see more stuff in the one down the end as well. Yep. But you can also see your friends, you know, battling for their ah! lives down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume you loot everything and shove it into your pockets? Yep. yep. Cool. Ah! So that would be... Fire in my bandolier and everything else in my pockets. Yep. Your turn then. Yep. Beautiful. We're back down to Derp. Derp, you are stable but unconscious, so that is your entire turn. Soz, that's the case someone heals you. You're not doing much at the moment. Um, and then it's we go a living! <laughs> back to Vorka, who is very upset that she missed with a little firebolt, so she's going to try again at Retta. Stand still! I can't cook you if you keep moving! And that's a test ah! that also misses as this little yeah. move for fire just... He's like, ah, stop it. I want to cook you and taste your insides. Get away, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord Longtong is currently struggling with a gobstopper. So let's see if it can swallow you. <laughs> One worse than last time. Your head's just too big to fit inside of Rob's <laughs> mouth. He's a 12 to swallow you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's trying to swallow There's you. And it can't. The right. Your turn. <laughs> Retta, your turn. Oh, it's mine. <laughs> um, 
cool. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to this chick's. You know, she's got her her eyes on me. So I I'm uh, I'm gonna keep my dog's eyes. I'm gonna put it away and actually use my short bow on her. Um, I think cool. my so you are currently like right next to the frog, which means it's definitely gonna be able to like smack into you if you try and do that. But if you take a five foot step back, you'll get a not provoking attack. Yeah, I'm gonna thank you. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take. Five so you scuttle back. backwards. <laughs> Pull out your short bow. That means you've <laughs> dropped your dog slicer on the floor, just so you know. Yeah, that's okay. The gorge have gotten something. You still have your spare dog slicer, but you don't have the, the fancy one. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can take a shot at Vorka, the cannibal. 22 is definitely going to hit as you Woo! pump an arrow into her for 1d4 damage. That's quite small, but alas. Mm. Uh... Three. Three damage as you stick it out into her. She kind of screams out. Ah! No, I even to cook you, not the other way around. <laughs> um, can I swap back now to the dog slicer? Or? Nope, your dog slicer is currently lying on the floor over here. Yeah, okay. Uh, you yeah. have a spare one, but you can draw that on your turn if you want to. Yeah, okay. Beautiful. So, next up, we have got Trazzy. Ah! Uh, ooh, future chief still in Mouth of Frog. Maybe, maybe if... Future chief awake, he can bite. I'm going to take a five foot step forward again so I can poke with my good juju stick. Yeah. So technically, he's still in this square. He hasn't been swallowed yet, so you can oh. do it from where you were before. <laughs> At least my head. Right is. now, the only thing in there is this head, and it's kind of gagging on the head. <laughs> Guys, I look for the movie, man. <laughs> so you can poke him on the feet or something if you want to. Uh, cool. Yeah. You heal four hit points back, Derp. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you, you! Just hear screaming sounds. <laughs> <laughs> From inside of the frog. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Zeg goes up. Ah! I'm going to keep scaling along the rigging there. <laughs> cool. We need another acrobatics check there, not to fall off. This one oh, that's great. Anymore. That's a, that's a, a 19. With More than enough to use deck. scuttle. Ah! Towards the other side, and now you're above the party. Oh, um, no. What I'm going to do, just for ease of use, is I'm going to put, put you over there. Yeah. on the bottom deck so yep. everyone can see where you are. But you're currently like 25 foot in the air, basically. <laughs> oh, no, friends! Um, can I see through the... I can't see the door, but I see, the, I see the frog but the You can see me. the frog, but you also can see the items in this little uh, section over here. If you look down, there is a masterwork sling and a dozen sling stones down there. Probably not as interesting to you as, you know, the alchemist fire and stuff. That's cool, but... Oh, no! Chief, future chief, Derp, I will help you. And I drop some alchemist fire on the frog with my seven wisdom. Yeah. Okay, sorry, make me sorry, a Derp. ranged attack. Yeah, look at the higher ground. I have the higher ground as well. Yep. <laughs> you get a plus one to hit. A plus one to hit, yeah. Oh, you get the high ground. Yeah, plus right. one to hit. That's it. All right. Oh, that's gonna. That's probably going to do it, though, because that's a 13 plus lots of stuff plus seven is 20. Beautiful. So you just drop this on it, basically, and it explodes, doing 1d6 points of fire damage and one point of fire damage to everyone within five. And foot. one extra 1d4 as well. Oh, it's so 1d6 plus 1d4. Yeah, because my thing. So I do... Te- whoa, 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 whoa. I do max damage there onto the frog. Uh, with an alchemist fire, yeah, I do uh, 10 plus 5, 14 damage to the frog and minimum 14. splash damage. Yep. 14. 1d6 plus 4 and 1d4. Max damage on both dice. Wow, okay. I know, right? As Uh, as it explodes in flame, and then what's the splash damage? uh, The splash damage is 5. 5. It's 6. Hang on. So, um, directed as 1d6, every creature only takes 1 point of fire damage. 1 point of fire damage? Yeah, so it's, it's, fire? it's Alchemist Fire does one point of fire oh, damage. Oh, sweet. It's not, it's not the same bomb. Sweet. So one, one point of fire damage. Awesome. Cool. So everyone adjacent to it takes one. So um, you take one point of fire damage, Derp. Mm-hmm. So does Walker. But more importantly for you, as this frog explodes in fire, Alchemist Fire is kind of like napalm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. This Oof. frog just got napalmed, and <laughs> it's currently burning <laughs> as you squeeze your head out of it as it is now just, like, crisping up into tasty, you know, burnt-up goop in front of you. Frog's legs! 
as you manage to kind of regain your feet again as the frog just collapses. And Vorka just goes, no, not long talking. How dare you? I have to get a new pet now. <laughs> cool, but it's now your turn, Derp. Oh. I like pigeons. I need good vibe stick. And he pulls out the other co- uh, potion of, oh, wait, no, it's just potion. Good luck, juice. No, <laughs> cure light, cure light wounds, uh, and I'll drink that. Cool. So 1d8 plus 1 healing. Oof. So three. Three hit points back. It is now Vorka's turn. And she's like, ah, need more friends, clearly. And starts chanting and waving her hands around as she chants in this deep voice. Retta, your turn. Um... Uh, if she's chanting, I'm going to try and um, I bring out my lucky pet toad called Spottle. And I'm like, Spottle, I need you to do what you do best. And I try and throw this toad at her mouth. <laughs> oh, she's chanting. I feel like she's chanting something I don't want to hear. I throw this toad at her mouth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Bad toad. laughs> Roll me uh, just a like 1d20 plus. I think you're going to get a Plus five to this? Six. Yeah, plus five, because it's your deck. My team! <laughs> hey! So you smack her in the face with this, and she needs to make me a concentration check or f- screw up the spell that she's casting. Yeah. She Ooh. got a natural 19. The DC for this one would have been 15 plus double the spell level, which would have been 19. Oh. But you're using a frog. <laughs> which is going to increase that. So she's like chanting this spell and you can almost see as she's waving her hands like bees kind of like and wasps like curling together like she was summoning a swarm of wasps she was going to set at you guys. She's like, oh, can't tell I made the hawk. No, out more spicy frog. bees. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you watch as she then bites on poor Spottle. And spits out the frog, just glares at you. She's like, blah, blah, ah, "I'll get you for that." You and your frog too. <laughs> Toad, whatever. <laughs> um, oh, and, now yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. okay. <laughs> just rupted uh, her casting. Razzy, it's your turn. Oh, oh, cool. Um, I'm gonna take out the gourd and down the gourd. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, the fizzly bubbly gourd. Cool. So you yeah. skull this gourd go, go, and you feel this roiling in your stomach. You're like, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So you may now have your dragon's brew gourd, but drawing and drinking it's your full turn. So from next turn, you may use that. Fantastic. Thank you. Beautiful. Zengo zip wap up the top. All right. So I'm up on this mast here. I don't suppose I can see into the room where Vorka is. Right you do not have an x-ray vision, no. No, <laughs> no, I can't get an angle even to see the ground there. No. no. I'm just going to jump off. <clears throat> How high up am I? 20 foot. Yeah. I was gonna say, I've got a wisdom of seven right now. Okay, make me an acrobatics check. Yeah, I'm an acrobatics check to try and come down where everybody else is. Hang on, do you want to climb down or do you want to jump? No, no, I want to jump down. Oh, Lord. Okay, 18. go for it. 18 is my acrobatics check. An 18, cool. So to jump down 20 foot, I believe damage. you need to make me a... Lord, what is it to reduce falling damage? Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. Um, 15 acrobatics check ignores the first 10 foot. Sweet. So you land, you still take 20, sorry, 10 foot of falling, yep. which I believe for every 10 foot you fall, you take 1d6 damage. I believe that's the rule. So you'll take 1d6 points of damage and end up pro. Ah! So you take four damage as you smack it to the floor, and you're now lying there prone on the floor. Just <laughs> uh, Where did you jump off? Forwards, backwards, which, which square? Down to here. Oh, yeah. well, maybe directly forward. Yeah, back. Probably back behind sure. So yeah, you take four points of damage and you're now lying on the floor pro. Ah, can that I pick will myself be your up? Turn. Can I use like uh, can I can I convert my standard into picking myself back up? Uh yeah, you can I mean technically dropping is a free action. So <laughs> I drop. I, I did say I Yeah, jump, so, so then, yeah, so you jump. scramble back up to your feet then, yep. having taken four points of damage, as I mentioned. Ah. <laughs> sure. Uh Derp's turn. 
All right. So uh, as a goblin who fights by eating, um, fighting this goblin cannibal is a bit of a crisis of faith. Uh, so he's just going to charge... Either live long enough to become the cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, but he'll still charge in teeth first and go, ah! So fight, I assume fire you with kick fire. the smoldering body of the frog out the way? I'll certainly give it a go. Well, I'll just, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a smoldering frog. You just boot it. <laughs> right, cool. Um, cool. And you haven't used an ability that's inherent to your class the entire time. Do you want to use that? Uh, what do you mean? Get angry. What are you? As mate? in my rage, my rage. <laughs> my rage. You're a barbarian who hasn't raged all day. <laughs> this is very true. Um, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I will go into a barbarian rage. Cool. I, uh... So your muscles swell, your eyes become bloodshot. This is on top of your already roided up body. Your strength <laughs> increases by another four. Your constitution increases by four, which will give you two extra hit points. Awesome. You do, however, get minus two to your AC. Okay. So Easy. feel free to pop that in. It's all in. And then you may make your bites. Cool. Let's go for the big chump. This is terrifying. You're like a three and a half foot <sighs> goblin with a strength of 22. <laughs> so you lash out towards Walker. Sadly for you, you don't manage to hit as your teeth snap shut with an almost audible like whoosh as they slam and she's like ah, not, not, you don't bite me I bite you stupid head and, and raging he... in the barbarian rage get in my belly <laughs> and she's gonna try and slap you in the face with her flame that's still in her hand hmm. but no she cannot roll very well with this flame and as she tries a third time the flame flickers out she's just like ah um, and then she is going to take a five foot step back and as part of that she is going to pull out a scimitar cool uh, Retta okay um, so uh, <laughs> sorry my this is her killing spottle my lucky pet I'm kind of a little, little anxious now because um, I felt like I've been doing so well because of him and instead, I'm just going to charge at her with, uh, oh, can I pick up the dog slicer now? So if you try to move and then pick it up from the ground, that's a move action. So you won't be yeah. able to do that, but you do have a spare dog slicer. So if you're not using the magical one, you just drop the bow, pull out your dog slicer and run at her. You can try and stab her with the normal dog slicer. Okay, I'm going to run and stab at her with my cool. normal one. So now you have a dog slicer in this square, a short bow in this square. You still have a backup dog slicer, which you can use, and you have a crossbow. So you've still got one of each of melee and range weapon as you come running past, push past Derp with his knife, just like, you killed Spottle! And try and stab her. Yeah, despite her, like, having her pets chew my friends, I'm like, Spottle, no! <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so with the normal dog slicer, it's just plus three to hit. Six. Well, not going to be enough. She kind of twists out the way as your kind of weapon glances across her stomach and you realize that her skin seems almost hard as bark. She's not like normal goblin. She, she hot up. She doesn't feel right. Very uh, nice. Razzy. Razzy's going to run in. Whoa, let's go. Ah, oh, <laughs> Um, so I'm going to cool. run in here and then hop into the room in there if I can, which Sweet. I believe... So you come there. running in as you push past Derp and, and Retta. Uh, Vorka is going to get an attack at you as she swings out with her scimitar, but only gets a 10 to hit, so you manage to duck <sighs> underneath it. Now you're in point-blank range, basically. I'm going to spit fire in her face. Let's do it! As you yes! open your mouth and just... <laughs> as you spit out this giant blast of flame. Now I believe it is... Oh, no, you don't roll to hit. They roll to dodge. So you pretty much, they can't dodge this. They're just going to have to try and dive out the way as you breathe this out. So they did roll above a 15. They got an 18. So they take half damage, but it's still 4d6 damage as she kind of like oh. ducks under this explosion of fire from your mouth. Oh. So 15 becomes seven points of damage as you singe half her. Booker just screams, ah, like this. Zengo, zip wrap. 
Fantastic. So Zengo is everyone's getting all cluttered in here. He's gonna come join the party in here. So five, <laughs> ten, fifteen. Let make room for Zengo. <laughs> so, so he was back. He was up. He was up here. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Oh! And as he's moving through everybody, crawling and like pushing through, he's gonna pull out of one of his pouches another bit of sticky, icky, goopy stuff. He's gonna. It's just a chance, Zengo. Let's see if it works. And he's gonna start chewing on this sticky, icky, gooey stuff, which is one of his extracts. And okay. He's going to spit out some adhesive spittle. Ooh. Okay, so you have to imbibe it first, and then next turn you spit it out. Okay, he's going to eat it as he comes through then, and yeah. stand next to... So you have chowed water. down on your adhesive spittle, oh, and it oh, is oh, ready oh, to come oh, flying yep. out. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Derp, it's your turn. <clears throat> uh, all right. Uh, well, just still in this barbarian rage, and just kind of like chomping and biting <laughs> all around me, you're going to continue to do that. So like Pac-Man, you're just like, ar, 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 ar. Waka, 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 come... waka, 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 Yeah, exactly. Charging towards her. Are you going left or right? Like up or down? Uh, I'll go up. Okay. So you move in around here? Yeah. Cool. Come around this side and you're just like, for it. Make your... Oh, come on. <laughs> cool. Unfortunately, yeah, she manages to just duck as these massive... Shearing teeth just miss her. Make sure you keep track of your rounds of rage, by the way. I know you don't have no too problem. many on first level. No it is her turn. She's getting uncomfortably surrounded right now. So she's probably going to take a five foot step back in the corner to give her a bit of cover. And she is going to pull out a potion and drink it down. Look, 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 as she's look. feeling a little bit, oh, of course I roll one. Hey. I'm feeling a little bit wounded. And she kind of looks down the potion and is like, I want it down, piece of shit! <laughs> and <laughs> drops it. Ah, now a lot of click tongue got into it, didn't he? Uh, Retta, your turn. Um, after seeing her friends uh, go, all, we're all chiming in together as one nice, you know, cute party of goblin, savage goblins. I'm going to turn back around and try and go for a feat. I feel like I'm still kind of low to the ground. Um, and I'm going to slice her again with my feet uh, at her legs. Do you want to go here or here? Oh, hey, say that again. Do you want to, you want to go like one step left or right or to the bottom left? Because you need to be one of these two squares. Um, to the left. Go cool. just to the left. So you take a step in, slash out at her, and unfortunately you missed. Thankfully, you yeah. just rolled a two because uh, dog slices break in half on a one. So for those of you who don't know what a dog slicer is, they took scrap metal and then thought, I know what this scrap metal needs, an edge and holes drilled into it so it's light enough for me to carry. <laughs> and because you decided holes are a great idea into scrap metal, on a one it shatters. Cool. Mm -hmm. Trazzy, your turn. Of course. I'm going to spit fire at it again. It worked so well last cool. time. Yeah. So you're just like a flamethrower turn right now. Brah! Brah! <laughs> As she attempts another reflex save, this one fails, and you smack her right in the face for 18 points of damage. Yes! As there's just this explosion, she just goes screaming and like tumbling over, gets back up. This is manic, evil look on her face. She's like, No, I cook you, not the other way around. Zengo, your turn. Wait, so Zengo's gonna. He's gonna actually just do it from here. He's gonna chew on the little goopy thing he has in his mouth and then. And he's gonna spit it at Zorka. You and spit this adhesive spittle. I hit my and it functions as a tangle foot bag. So it entangles her and she gets to make a a uh, reflex save against it. That's a twelve. That's fails against yes! a fourteen. So you splatter her in this meaty substance, kinda of like so... this mucusy looking snot yep. mixture Hi! that just splatters her in the wall. Um and since she's failed a reflex save, I believe that means that she's actually like not just slow to whatever, but like entangled to the wall and immobilized. Yeah, she, is that correct? She's in well, she's entangled as 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 if by a tangle foot bag. So she's got a minus four and entangled teacher codes minus two on attack rolls and minus four to dexterity. Cool. And must but make a fifteen failed, reflex or be she's glued, glued to the floor. To the floor right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she needs to either make me a DC seventeen yeah. strength check. Yeah, you're right. You're goblins. Um, or to fifteen points of damage to goo to try and get off. Um, yeah. it does last for. 2d4 rounds. That's Great. Right. Can you roll me 2d4, please? Yeah, that's uh oh, that's huge. That's seven. 
seven rounds, so yeah. she's stuck to the wall she's now. Good to me. So you spit out this stuff, <laughs> and then I assume just kind of grin at her, and you can <laughs> see like the mucusy snot all over his teeth. And he's gonna point to everybody else. And say, I tell you, Zengo, smartest gobbo ever. They make the best things. Right, Derp, it is your turn. She's literally glued to the floor. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So even though it's a literally like a sitting duck target, uh, and even though he's raged out to his eyeballs, both from the potions and the actual rage uh he's gonna change up his approach this time and go for the bonk with the great club and the bite <laughs> uh, so Both you at can once. only bonk and bite if you've only taken a five foot step you had to uh, i did take that. a 10 take i took a 10 here, foot step you? yeah so you can All right, just so it's just a bite if you want yeah. yeah it's just a bite then charge towards uh she's just stuck in the wall she's like no no i hate you <laughs> and you can try and bite up as you just kind of like lean towards her, she's like, hey. I hate you! You look at her, you're just like, not anymore! <laughs> and congratulations, you are now the new resident goblin cannibal, as you do 15 points of damage to her. Oh, why, does, why does this taste like victory? <laughs> and the terrifying part is, it's now her turn, as you rip her throat out. She's technically not dead yet, because she needs one more point of damage to die. But as you tear her throat out, you look at her on her turn as she fails a constitution save, bleeds out, and you watch the, uh, ah. the lights in her eyes fade as <laughs> you're just standing there with her throat in your mouth. And I give it a very similar slurp that I did with the oh, uh, black God. slug. <laughs> Are you with you? Chief Dump! Chief Dump! Chief oh, Dump! 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 Feel the teeth! Dump! Dump! <laughs> No! Uh, I've eaten goblin! I can feel myself changing! <laughs> I I cannot be chief! No! No! Rita! Rita defeat many long leg! Rita do big horse ride! No. Rita should be chief! No! Rita is as smart as Zango! Zango chief! Uh, Zango can be chief! Zango <laughs> very smart! Zango make many things burn! Yes! Zango will be chief! Oh, <laughs> On you, Chief Zingo. <laughs> you guys are all forgetting that you guys already have a chief. <laughs> no, we're not forgetting. Yeah, we're, not forgetting. Yeah, we're, not. <laughs> we're aware of what this mission means to the goblin community as a whole. And Zengo yeah. turns to turns to Trazi with like narrowed eyes. They swear fealty to the chief. Do you swear fealty, fealty to the chief? Do you swear? <laughs> <laughs> Trazi, advisor, advisor for chief advisor. Advisor for advisor, oh, chief advisor. Cassie, fire breath. Ah! <laughs> so you guys finally look around in this space now that you've kind of exterminated Walker, and the air in this cabin is thick and close and stinking of swamp and sweat. Just, you know, a great kind of area to live in. There's a thick, glistening layer of mud on the floor and swathes of oily fungus that cling to the walls. But even more, there is dangling decorations of goblin bones and animal part fetishes that hang from the ceiling on lengths of sinew here. And what appears to be a nest made of rags, sticks, mud, and cast off bits of clothing lies against the western moth wall. But scattered amid the filth and clutter are several exotic-looking man-made objects, including a tantalizing red chest. Oh. Ooh! Mm. Go, chief! Open, open box. Ah, ah, okay, okay, I've never done this before. I've never been chief. Uh, ah, ah. And then Zango scuttles over and <laughs> examines the chest and then pops it open. Oh. So you kind of have a look around. So there's lots of, like I said, man-made objects in here that are probably worth something to most people. But if you're just, like, narrowing in directly on the chest to start off with, you come over to this red chest and you kind of crack open the lid. It's unlocked, thankfully. And inside, first of all, it's very, very heavy. And obviously inside this, it was once packed full. But for now, it is full of, about half full of fireworks. Zengo's <gasps> eyes like light up. Yeah. There are 14 Desnan candles, 20 paper candles, and seven skyrockets, enough to make the chief very, very happy. Zengo's hand starts going towards his torch at the side of his. Smart as gold in my ass. <laughs> no, no, Zengo, not today. Not today. He puts his torch away. Friends! Allies! We find the fizzy boomsticks. 
Smart choice, Zengo. Smart choice. You're good chief. Yes, I am. <laughs> come, friends, come. Help me. Take, take Boomsticks back to camp. Then we make some changes around there. Yeah. Where do <laughs> I go? But first, we eat frog's legs. Ah, delicatessen. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd never ask. Foot too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also have horse and we have dog. Oh, and so we have fine. Zorka or Duchess Ford Derp. <laughs> So if you guys are looking around as well, there are, I said, lots of other long shank made things in here. What have we got? Give us the good. So any, you've got a any, bunch of interesting dressings? things. For example, there is lots of broken and things around here, but they're all strangely decorative. They have like colorful serpentine dragons, towering cliffs, delicate humanoid figures that just look weird to you guys because they're too tall. Uh, strange pagodas. Not that you guys have any idea what a pagoda is. Just you would be like, yep, tool shed, maybe. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but amongst the filthy and broken clutter, there is what would have been to like towards a collector, like hundreds of gold pieces, which to you guys, it's just like mostly stuff, you know, bamboo, stuff. exotic woods, paper. Yeah, burnable materials. That's about it. Mm. But amongst them, however, there is 140 gold pieces worth of shiny coins. Again, that doesn't really help you too much. But there is also a bejeweled silver and jade lantern built to look like a coiled dragon, which is very, very pretty. There are a dozen masterwork shuriken or stabby, shiny, spiky knives. Uh, mm, stabby, <laughs> there's shiny, an ivory knives. and gold fan depicting a gecko walking and cherry blossoms which on the back seems to have a very crude map drawn on it, just like the one Scribbleface kind of did for you guys. Mm. Um, and there's, there's also a long hairpin with a red pearl on one end. Um, finally, there is a wand and what looks like an elixir in a crystal vial shaped like a heart. Mm. Pretty oh. potion. It looks delicious. Can I go pick up the wand? Yeah. yeah. Good vibe stick. And can I point it at someone and just let it off? You want to random? Okay. Do you have a use magic device? I do have a use magic device. Make me a use magic device check. Wait. I will. Not great. Sure. Well, you can keep on trying until you get a 20 or a 1. You need to get above a 20 or you can get a 1. Oh, gee. Okay. I if don't you get a 1, it stops working for the day. You get a 20, it goes off. So you're just like, ah, ah, ah. Thresh and flick. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on trying. See what happens. See what comes first. It either breaks or you you get that. So whilst Trazzy is sitting there waving a wand around, who are you aiming at? You know what? Let's aim at the body. <laughs> <laughs> it might get up and move again. Who knows? Okay, so you're just wildly waving this wand around. What's the rest of you guys doing? Pulling the fireworks away, like <laughs> getting all the fireworks. <laughs> there you go. Eventually. <laughs> So after like two minutes of being like, rah, 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 you finally get it right. And what shoots out the end of it is food. <gasps> ah! Ah! Delicious! As basically you fire out like, I don't know how many, I think seven amount, amount enough food to sustain. Oh no, hang on. That's a shit ton of food. Uh, three <laughs> times seven is 21. 21 humans. So like four goblins. Um, <laughs> as the food just fires out, there's now like a small feast just burying Walker's body. I declared it first feast. Feast, feast, feast. And completely losing track of what's happening. Sweet. Uh, the just food all tastes out. completely bland, but it's food, so most of you guys don't care. Yeah. So you scarf it all down. Meanwhile, yeah, you manage to, like, data deck everything else. I, I assume you were looking at the potion, by the way. Um, yeah, I was going to wait till Derp, yeah, till Derp goes away, and I'll uh, grab and have a look at this potion and this love heart thing. Mm. Uh, that's pretty decent. I hope that's going to do it. That's uh, 19. That's exactly what you needed. Oh, oh, this is an elixir of love. The first person who drinks it will become enraptured by the first person she sees after drinking it. Uh, for 1d3 hours, it will make them as if charmed. Then go slips it into <laughs> <laughs> so you have got what you came for. Is it time to head back towards town? Mm -hmm. Let's go back. Wonderful. So I assume after uh, poor uh, Derp has worn off from his berserker rage, uh, you strap a massive chest to his back. 
and oh, lug it death. all the death way back to camp. Mm -hmm. So you drag it back towards there. Thankfully, you don't. You manage to keep uh, Zengo away from accidentally setting off any of the wait, fireworks. Wait, wait. Before we go back, the yeah, as we leave. Oh, Rita, Tazi, I find many boomsticks in there. Not cheap fizzy boomsticks, but other boomsticks. You want to make this thing go burn? Yes. Oh, and them all a vial of alchemist fire. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys try and burn down the um, the ship, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if you light the middle of the ship on fire, it'll burn like the entire center section. The outside is too wet, but you can gut the entire yeah. middle of the ship. Uh, which, I mean, to your great pleasure, you'll probably find out later on, there was like a dog in the upstairs area, <laughs> a really big, scary one. So that one burns to death as well. <laughs> so wait. None of you guys are aware it was toad, there. We <laughs> we but the lunch is still the place. Place. So you guys are having great fun. <laughs> Beautiful. So you make your way Beautiful. back to town. Everything is going fantastic. You don't get attacked by any other giant spiders on the way back. For you have slain the only one that could dare challenge you. Um, and as you get so back, smug right now. <laughs> they get back to town. You are very, very excited to make it back there. And his mighty girthiness, Chief Wendwattle Gutward, is so excited to see you that they hold a giant feast in your honor. Another feast! Yes. <laughs> Trazzy, of course, manages to get her wand working uh -huh. one last time, realizing it only had two charges left, and gives enough food for, like, some of the goblins to eat. Apart from that, they are all super satisfied with your big red chest that you've brought back. But the chief has some awards to give out. He needs to uh -huh. name you, first of all, for what he is. And he has decided... That for your, who you think should be chief, who he thinks is very, very cute. But he decides to reward you. You want to be chief? Very well. You may marry my daughter. The fearsomely corpulent and ferociously lusty Guppy <laughs> Wartbits. Oh, Guppy Wartbits. <laughs> but the rest of you shall not go unseen. For <laughs> Frazzy Buttwhistle gets given the title of the boss of Big Fire. Yay! Meanwhile, Retta gets given Overseer of Village Stabbings, a very important role. <laughs> yeah, Retta the Stabby! And Derp, after your great efforts in eating people, gets made the head <laughs> village watcher. It's your job to make sure that you're watching out for everybody else. <clears throat> You and also have to come to the side bonus of being named Master of the Pig Pit because Yay! the only other person who's known to eat goblins right now is the terrifying piglet <laughs> who you have a friendship with. <laughs> As you've all kind of settled yourselves back in and unbeknownst to you, there was lots of stuff happening behind the scenes there. And anyone who plays the Jade Regent Adventure Path may actually find that this is actually the precursor to that entire campaign. So if you ever do want to pick that up, you already have done the introduction. Uh, you don't play as goblins in that adventure path, <laughs> but you do get to beat these wonderful goblins again. Um, if you had some fun listening to this, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is uh, the Pathfinder's Weeby Goblins. There is also Weeby Goblins 2. <laughs> Uh, we three goblins and we be goblins four, all invoking similar characters and similar Come shenanigans. On. So feel free to let us know if you like more stuff. You can send us messages if you want. This is a bit of fun. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been watching and joining us today with the stream. Uh, that is going to be the end of our little module. So thank you so much for attending uh, us today with the Weeby Goblins. Before we wrap up, however, we do need to organize a raffle. So uh, I believe people have been voting on this raffle. We'll see. Maybe we have a couple of things left. Um, I just want to get a feedback from everyone else in the meantime. How did you find that encounter? Do you have some fun with that? Oh, my God. That so great. much fun. Fantastic. You it's guys horrible. are so fun. <laughs> horrible, horrible time. Mm. Didn't enjoy a single minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. It's like okay. our insanity brought us together. Which yeah, right. <laughs> absolute 
chaos. Absolutely. Yeah. So the one <laughs> trick with we should form a choir. You need to suspect yeah. record <laughs> your heroism. Yeah. You kind of can't do it any other way. Um, you this actually really suited me. I actually really enjoyed playing a gobbo. It's my normal Same. play style is mm. chaotic. Yeah, look, yeah. I've kept on trying to get DMs to let me play a goblin, but they never let me because I want to yeah. play a goblin paladin in, like, golden armor. I know <laughs> why you want to play that as well. I've looked up some of the feats you can go for that dodge tank. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, there's a very silly goblin feat called roll with it, which is pretty much that if you take damage, you can instead make an acrobatics check versus five plus the damage dealt. And if you get higher than that, instead of taking any damage, you get knocked that many feet, <laughs> and then you just are on the floor. So you can literally run up to like a giant, stab it with like a knife, and then it smacks you for like 30 damage. And as long as you can make like a 35 acrobatics check, not likely. But if you do, you just go, Wah! like 35 <laughs> foot away. And you're just like, I'm okay. And then get back up. <laughs> Bouncy boy. It's the dumbest shit. I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, but I do wanted to share with you, since we're just finishing up now, we've got a couple of minutes left, a couple mm. of fun facts about goblins in the Pathfinder universe. If you're not used to Pathfinder, as we saw, their goblins are a little bit crazy, but there's 10 key things about goblins that everyone needs to know in case you do want to delve into some goblin having fun in the future. Uh, the first thing that you've learned, I'm sure, is that goblins hate horses. <laughs> they all love riding things. But yeah, they're not too keen on horses because they tend to step on them. Same with dogs. Hate dogs, but they love goblin dogs, which are actually giant rats. Uh, they quite enjoy those. Uh, goblins will raid anything they can get their hands on, and they love to sing. We've already seen that. I love that. Uh, and, but they are also very, very sneaky little freaks uh, <laughs> and very crazy. For example, they think that hiding in an oven is a fantastic place to hide because they clearly don't see things through very well. Uh, they will eat pretty much anything. They love burning things. But as we discovered earlier, their heads are so big, they tend to get stuck in things. And what started this all off, <laughs> goblins believe writing steals your soul. So legit literate goblins, <laughs> beware, you will get exiled. So everyone, thanks so much for that. I'm going to let you all just kind of do a little bit of plugs for yourselves before we wrap up and announce our winner for the raffle. So uh, do you want to go for Marshall? Do you want to go, Adam? Do you want to give us a bit of a plug for, tell us a bit about yourself yeah. and what you do and everything? First of all, that was awesome. Thanks for running that, Brad, and thanks everyone else for playing. I had an absolute blast. It was Wicked Chemistry. I think in the future we need to run our own We Be Goblins now in which we stage a coup against Chief yeah. and the rest of the Goblin clan. Mm. Derp can eat more things. Rita can stab more things. Trazzy can burn more things. That was sweet. <laughs> But in the meantime, if you did in, uh, if you enjoyed this, this has been great. Jasper's has been awesome. Uh, both Brad and I, as we mentioned, are members of the Hubble Goblin podcast. So it's a live action, actual play, well, not live action, but actual play audio podcast. We're on Spotify and all the major sort of podcast outlets. Thanks. So if you liked if you liked how we play together, check us out there. We have an absolute ball there. It's a little <laughs> bit less. Yeah, what I mean is less less PG thirteen, a lot less, but we have a lot of fun there. <laughs> it does have the explicit tag on it for a reason. Yeah, explicit tag. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah. Again, cool. thanks everybody for playing, and thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to give a little bit of a plug? Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you once again. Thanks, Brad, for doing that. Thanks uh, to the guys at Jasper's as well for for putting it on. Thank you for everyone who donated. That was so cool to see coming in. Um, this is this has been an awesome event. Can't wait to do it again. Um, and just for me to, because my goblin had a big head, I need to do a uh, a bit of a big head self promotion myself. And hey, I'm on Twitch as well. If you like my silly voices, I do other silly voices Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, that's twitch.tv forward slash pantsless rambler, which I'm in the chat there somewhere. So it could be a follow. Help me out. But anyway, are you wearing pants right now? <clears throat> I'd rather not say. Cool. So, but you're definitely rambling. Brilliant, mm -hmm. Lydia. <laughs> Hi guys. Ah, uh, thank you so much for that. That was my first Pathfinder game. First time playing a goblin. First time playing that chaotic. So that was that was wild. Um, yeah, uh, that was incredible. This like I just as game game day has been um, pretty pretty impressive. We've had so much donated. So guys, well done. Um, especially the moderators, the producers, everyone behind the behind the scenes that are making this happen giving us the chance to um, spread awareness. It's really important, but like, you know, we're having so much fun doing it, which is great. Um, so I, yeah, if you guys want to see more 
uh, D and D content like that. Uh, we, I have a, I'm part of a channel called Split the Party. It's on YouTube. We release episodes every Wednesdays. We don't just do D and D. We do tabletop role playing games like Kids on Bikes. Um, and Pathfinder games as well. We have a Patreon as well, so you can support us that way. But yeah, head on over to Split the Party. It's very chaotic. It's not PG thirteen. It is uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely a uh, MA plus MA MA fifteen. Um, but yeah, uh, I think most of the guys from Split the Party have all participated in this. So yeah, it's just a great, great chance for us to do what we do best and uh, have some fun, which is what we did. So guys, thank you so much. It's been been a pleasure. Awesome. Well, I just have a few shout outs first. Well, I wanted to thank, obviously, uh, Jasper's uh, Game Day for the donations and everything. We've currently donated over 1.5K uh, on this stream, which is pretty amazing. And we're up to 6.24K for the overall Jasper's Game Week. So that's going incredible, thankfully. Uh, mm -hmm. I will also point out that we are doing some giveaways at the end of the week in addition to our raffle for today. So we're going to be doing a Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft pack, including both the standard and alternate covers. This is going to be getting shipped directly from Wizards of the Coast before release. <laughs> That'll be coming out later in the week, as well as we're going to be having an Ardent Roleplay reward, which is going in the draw to win a year's GM subscription to Ardent Roleplay's augmented reality app and a deck of 75 high fantasy themed AR encounter cards, which should be getting released, I believe, on the 8th of May at 10 p.m. So keep an eye out for that. Should be pretty exciting. I've actually never checked out the augmented reality stuff, so I really want to, considering I used to like program for virtual reality stuff. Should be pretty exciting. Um, and then finally, I believe we have hit raffle time. So mm -hmm. we are going, as I said, be handing out two very fantastic and fantastically made glasses, laser engraved with the meeples and dragons, one of them for DMs and one of them for bards. Ooh. So we are just going to get it. And our winner right now is Miss Cass. So thank you very much, Miss Cass, for that. Feel free. To, I'm sure we'll get in contact with you on how to pick those up. And for everyone else, thank you for attending Jasper's Game Week. Thank you for donating. I said everything is going towards a fantastic cause. We're all very excited to be part of this to help everyone out and to raise awareness. Uh, apart from that, thank you for joining us. If you want to check us out, feel free to check out uh, Split the Party, as I said. There was Panthers Rambler, Rambler and the Hobbled Goblin. Uh, and we'd love to see you all there. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. And I believe we're going to be taking a short break before we're back at 7 o'clock for our next stream. So thank you, and we'll see you on a little you, bit. Brad. Thank you, Brad. Woo! Thanks, guys. Hobbled Goblin represent. Baby <laughs> <laughs> Goblins. And everyone, Goblin dance out. Goblins, Goblins. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you.